Good evening, everyone. I now call to order the special session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, August 18, 2020, at 6.30 p.m. Ms. Jacobs, roll call, please. Mayor yeah, but who's this? Here. Vice Mayor Carr. Here. Mr. Terrapani. Here. Mr. Donovan. Here. Mr. Vatikiotis. Here. As a reminder, to do the health crisis we will continue to face, the meetings will continue to be conducted by video conferencing and provide for public comments to protect the public and employees. We are now going to the public comments of the items that we're not going to be discussed tonight. Uh, if you please state your name and your address for the record and you'll be given four minutes. Ms. Jacobs, have we received any emails? No emails were received. Thank you. Mr. Jeff, do we have anyone online that is wishing to speak? Yes, sir, we do have a raised hand at this time. Okay. Could you hear me? Yes, yes sir, we're hearing you. Is the video active? No, sir, you are just on audio. Thank you. If you could please state your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Anthony Martiri, and my address is 405 Innes Drive. Please go Thank ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm in my, I am at our home right now in our kitchen, and my neighbor uh, has painted a satanic image uh, on his garage wall, which faces directly into our kitchen and living area. Uh, you could see it from our primary home, as well as you could see it from the neighbor's homes across the street. And we've had a myriad of automobiles drive by. Uh, for the last two weeks since this has been painted. And I would just like to uh, find out if this satanic art is considered art. Uh, and if, you know, this is considered art, then would a swastika or a KKK sign also be considered art? Because this is a very threatening symbol uh, that has really intimidated us and a lot of our neighbor. So I would like to request, you know, that the commis commissioners really look at the definition of art as it's uh, placed on buildings and how it affects neighbors and uh, so forth. Uh, this is not a mural, a beautiful mural, as you would see on the Chamber of Commerce building or uh, at the sponge docks where it's uh, enhanced enhancing the neighborhood. What I'm gonna, yeah, could you activate the video so I could show you what this mural looks like? That would be a decision for the board. Uh, why don't you just send some pictures in, sir, and we'll have the seat attorney to take a look at it. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. We do have another raised hand, so I'll allow them in. If you would please state your name and address for the record. Yes, Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. I would like to revisit uh, the North Lake Estates issue with regards to the provision of utilities. You are setting a very bad precedent as these developers come in on the outskirts of town and begin to annex into the city, but do not hook up to our public services. Our utility system depends on expanding 
the base that we draw on for the costs and the expenses. If we do not do this, then the people that are on it and those that infill within the inner part of the city will be bearing the larger burden of these utility bills. You are negligent in allowing these developments as they expand on the outer edges of the city to continue to go to the county for their water and sewer. You're helping the county with their issues, but not helping the residents of Tarpon Springs. So before this project is finished and completed through the process of review and site plans and such, I urgently ask that y'all look at this, get Ron Herring out and look at the bond covenants. I've shown you previously, I sent the information in, we're in the bond covenants, it does require that we expand our system such that it stays viable. A few, about a year or so ago, y'all approved increases in the rates for sewer, water, and stormwater. Well, one of the ways to mitigate some of those increases is expanding the service. We're already providing the electricity and the manpower to create the water and to handle the sewage that comes back. But if we don't expand the rate base as to the people putting into the rates, then those of us who are in the city now are going to be absorbing the burden going forward in the future of increased rate heights. So I would say maybe get with Mike Burton or whoever else is now doing your rate studies and see if he can assess what the impact is by not having these annexation properties on the outer skirts of the city being brought into our water and sewer system. So I would put it on the board. Uh, the city manager should be getting in touch with Mike Burton and Associates. I don't know if they're the ones still doing it or if he's retired and there's someone else, but this is an obligation of the board that you must take to avoid the current rate payers of the Tarpon Springs utilities from having to pay a higher price for water and sewer because you're not having new residents connect up. It's totally unfair to us and it's a responsibility of yours to make sure that our systems are fiduciarily sound and not just on the backs of the current rate payers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delacos, and my condolences for your, the passing of your mom. She was a great lady. My condolences for your Mark, do we have anybody else? We have no other raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to the item number one. Notify supervisor of elections of removal of purchase of MM Marina and 15 year lease of Anklo uh, commercial properties for the November 3rd, 2020 election ballot. Staff report, Mr. LeCourse. Yes, that is, I delivered the news last week about the falling through of the lease purchase. Um, we gave it another week. Um, as Commissioner Vatikula said, we tried to do a Hail Mary, um, and we did make an attempt to possibly salvage it, although we knew there was a long shot with another place, and it did not work out. So uh, the supervisor elections is waiting tomorrow morning for Irene's call um, of taking those two items off the ballot. Um, obviously, you see item two on there. Um, and item two goes along with uh, taking them off the ballot and the sending me back to try to re renegotiate um, the purchase of the marina to give us more time to search for a property for the parking and maybe salvage this uh, for uh, March. The next available election would be in March. Um, we would have to pay the election fee, but the importance of this project, the 35,000 it would cost, we do save a little bit because we're going to be piggybacking on other cities. But um, again, the first order of business is taking those two items uh, and authorizing the city clerk to call the elections and uh, take those items off the uh, ballot for November 3rd. 
Well, I like to say that I'm very disappointed that even though the hard work of Mr. LaCourse, Mr. Trask and the staff were not able to reach an agreement with the Anchor Commercial Properties, so now we have to notify the supervisor of elections to remove it from the uh, November 3rd, 2020 election ballot. That's very disappointing to us. Are there any commission comments on this item? I have one, Mayor. Yes. I'd like to, I think what the uh, city manager is asking in this particular item as well is to uh, authorize him to proceed and, and see if we can get a contract extension. That's uh, item number two, Commissioner. Uh, I'll wait till then. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any comments on this item, number one? Vice Mayor yeah. Carr, any comments? Uh, no, I don't have any comments. Okay. Mayor, I, I just say that I was, uh, I will continue to recuse myself from the vote even on an item such as this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commission Donovan? No comments for me. <clears throat> Commissioner Tikiorz, do you have anything else that would you like to uh, comment? Well, I, I, it's, I was firsthand watching the uh, staff work on this and, and it was Mr. LaCour spent hours and hours and hours. I know uh, our city attorney did, Mr. Robertson, uh, all of our engineering staff. I think they went through 20 plus configurations of the parking with various different uh, shapes of the par property trying to accommodate um, the owner of quality T-tops and we just couldn't get there. And um, I, um, I just want to thank everybody for their effort. They certainly got an A for effort, even though we didn't get to first base on this thing. We really, uh, I think we learned a lot from this one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we go to the public comments. Ms. Jacobs, have we received any emails? We received no emails. Mr. Jump, do we have anyone that is wishing to speak on this item? If anyone would like to speak, please raise your hand. We do not have any raised hands at this time, sir. Thank you. The chair will detain a motion. Motion approved. Need a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Vatigueri? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzas? Yes, thank you. We are now going to the item number two, which, which is to authorize the city manager to negotiate an extension of purchase agreement with the MM Marina and locate a new site for lease or purchase for additional parking. Mr. LeCour, staff report. Again, I think uh, uh, we will make attempts um, to renegotiate um, to give us some more time. There is one other piece of property that's closing that's just north of the property that we were looking at. Um, when that closes, um, I think the people who are buying it are going to be receptive to at least talking with us. So we will wait for that to happen, hopefully within the next month. And uh, I think, you know, that's where we would attempt, um, which is in near proximity. Um, to negotiate to try to find that lease for the parking. So this would be to authorize me to first of all to uh, to get the new contract with the extension of time, and then go try to secure um, that property for the additional parking. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, I am in favor. I'm sure everybody is in favor to authorize Mr. Lequeurs to negotiate an extension to purchase the agreement. Uh, with the MM Marina and find a new site for additional parking. Uh, provide a bull ramp to the people of Tarper Springs has been my goal and objective for many, many years, and I'm hoping that this will materialize. Um, are there any uh, commission comments? <clears throat> Vice Mayor Carr? Yeah, I just have a quick one a question from Mark. Um, has the sellers have they expressed interest in um, extending it and working with us? Uh, I haven't approached them yet uh, until y'all got this vote. Okay. I believe there will be, though. Okay. No further questions. Commissioner Terrapani, do you want to comment? 
No, sir. I'm going to stay with you. Thank you. Commission Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess this is a question for staff is when would we expect to see this again? And would we have to hold a special election to do it like in March or? Yes, uh, the next available special election is in March. I don't think we have the deadlines of when, you know, what the deadline. I don't know if it's December or January when we'd have this. Uh, do you know Irene yet or have they given you that or? It's usually the first week of December, but we, I'm sorry, the first week of January, but we try to do it the, our last meeting of December, mm -hmm. the finals. So that's when we'd have to have the ballot language similar that we, you know, had for last week that we had um, to go and negotiate um, to be able to do um, the March election, which would be the, the next one that we could uh, do it on. Okay. My, my position on this one remains the same, but I have no further questions, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Tikiotis. Yes, Mayor. Um, I think it would be the March election. I don't think realistically we should try and do anything over the holidays. We, we've discussed this and tried that in previous elections, and there was a lot of criticism for that. So March and um, uh, same manager, of course, I think there is going to be a higher cost to that election um, than what we anticipated for this one, piggybacking on, or, or am I wrong about that? I, I think uh, the city clerk um, uh, told me that there might be around 30,000. 30 to 35,000 probably. It'd be a little more if we weren't paid. We'll say maybe I think 5,000 by piggybacking, but we'll still have a cost of about 35,000. Okay. I, um, I'm, I'm in full support of this. And um, it, we, we haven't been able to talk to the owners yet because we're still in contract until there's official votes taken tonight. And then there's a, a provision uh, in there that uh, allows us to uh, uh, cancel this contract. And I think it's gonna be a, either, I'm not sure how it would work, whether it's an extension, but I suspect that it's gonna be a new contract with new terms as well, but hopefully nothing much is going to change as far as the uh, sale price. But the bottom line is we're not going to know unless uh, the uh, city attorney uh, talks to the owners. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, we go to the public comments. Ms. Jacobs, have we received any emails? No emails are received. Thank you. Mr. Jump, do we have anyone that uh, wishes to speak on this item? Yes, sir, we do have a raised hand at this time. Okay. Hello? Yes, yes, sir, if you could please state your name and address for the record. Yes, uh, Peter Lackas, 514 Ashland Avenue. Um, maybe there's a, a pr reason why this has fallen through at this point. Maybe it gives you a chance to reevaluate the priorities as to where you can actually put a boat ramp and other aspects of water activities. As we've mentioned many, many, many times before, the amount of money you're going to be spending for that property and the lease property and all the expense of putting the infrastructure for parking. That all could go towards your Florida Community Trust Grant to purchase the Walmart property. When it was originally offered out around $8 million, $2 million would have been 25%. That's all we would have had to put up. And y'all are getting prepared or were prepared to spend that same amount of money for basically two acres when you could have had 74 acres with multi-purpose activities upon it. So if you're looking at March where you're going to spend $30,000 for an election, why not use this time to have staff prepare a Florida Communities Trust Grant and see where we stand with regards to the point system and see if we can't work with the Walmart people and finding out if they would be accommodating uh, for us to do that because it would be much better for us as the city to have that property for boating access, uh, hiking access, equestrian, uh, all kinds of fitness things that we can do. I've said many times the options that we have available for that property. And uh, in the same time frame that you're going to be trying to do an election for the two acres, 
you could get on board and apply for the Florida Communities Trust Grant and speak with the Walmart people such that we have that come in versus potentially 400 and something townhomes that we're not going to be able to fill. So I would put it to the board to start asking the city manager to begin that process to maximize the value of $2 million to leverage it where we have control of 74 acres of property versus two. And you've heard me say this before, and if y'all need more details, uh, we'll be glad to send you more information on the Florida Communities Trust Grant, although we had sent it to Mark previously, so you may still have that on file. But I would urge the board to look at your options because maybe this is a sign that uh, that property on the other side of the river isn't what the city actually needs for those types of purposes you're trying to accomplish from it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do not have any other raised hands at this time. Thank you. The uh, chair will contain a motion. Move to authorize the city manager to uh, enter into another negotiation with the uh, of m, m Arena to attempt to either extend or get a new contract under the uh, existing terms. And to find a site for additional parking, right? It would give him an opportunity to do that, but it would be an ex based, uh, that would be, have to be contingent on the extension of the uh, the contract. Okay. Just for Peterson. clarification, is that if that's fine? This is to approve the city manager to go out and extend or make an offer to extend the current agreement that's in place with the buyer. And then it's going to be contingent on purchase still if we find or if the city finds a, a lease. Am I understanding that correctly? No, I, I think uh, Vice Mayor Carr, he's going to have to come back. If they, they accept it, he'll he'll create some terms and then it's going to have to come back to our <laughs> for uh, before we get to that next step that you just described. OK, so this is just to uh, approve the city manager to extend the current agreement or renegotiate the current agreement. For an Actually extension, to right? negotiate. And w whether they say yes or no, he's going to have to come back and, and explain to us what the terms are, whether they're the same or whether there's new terms. OK. Thanks for clarifying. I, I second it. Hey, Rocco. Mr. Vaticiotis? Yes. Mr. Bonavent? No. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes. Item number three is resolution 2020-48, ratified executive order. City Attorney, if you please read the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 2020-48, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, ratifying Executive Order 2020-25 and extending the declaration of local state of emergency to August 18th, 2020, providing for an effective date hereof. That has been Resolution 2020-48 by title only. Thank you. Are there any commission comments? Vice Mayor Carr? I don't have any comments. Commission Terrapani? No comments, sir. Commission Donovan? No comments. Commission Otikiotis? No, thank you. I don't have any comments either. Uh, Ms. Jacobs, do we have any emails? No emails. Mr. Jab, do we have anyone that is wishing to speak on this item? We do not have anyone in attendance at this time. I need a motion. Motion approved. Second. And roll call. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Carr? Yes. Yes. Well, that concludes the agenda, and we go to staff comments. Police Chief Kutchen? No comments, Mayor. Thank you. City Attorney? No comments. Thank you very much. City Manager? No comments. City Clerk? No comments. Vice Mayor Carr? None. Commission Terrapani? No, sir. Commission Donovan? None from me. Commission Vaticuris? I'm good, thanks. Not from me either. Well, that concludes the special session meeting. It's adjourned at 6.54 p.m. All right, have a good night. <laughs> yeah, don't go away. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
We are now going to the budget work session. <laughs> I am calling to order the budget work session of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, August 18th, 2020 at 6.55 p.m. And roll call. Marilyn, who's this? Here. Vice Mayor Carr? Here. Mr. Terrapani? Here. Mr. Donovan? Here. Mr. Vaticiotis? Here. Well, the purpose for tonight's meeting is for the Board of Commissions to study the issues, to gather, analyze information, to clarify questions. No votes are conducted during the work session. No public comments will be allowed tonight <laughs> on this budget. However, will be allowed during the two public hearings that we have scheduled on Thursday, September 3rd, and Tuesday, September 15th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Before we go to item number one, uh, do you want to set a time limit on this uh, work session tonight? Yes. What time? The last time was to nine. You want to keep the same or you want to go further later? I, I would motion for nine, depending on what the board would like. Do I have would a just, second for the, the time limit? Just a point of order, Mayor, it would just be a consensus because it's not a voting. No votes. Okay. Do we have consensus on that? Yes, I'm fine. I'm good with nine or 9.30. If we need to go a little bit further, just finish up some stuff. Okay, the consensus is 9 p.m. Nine works. Commission Donovan, I don't see you. I'm, I'm all right with nine. Nine? Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, actually, the uh, tonight's budget session is a continuation of the last work session that we had on August 13, 2020. I hope everyone had the opportunity to get in touch with the city manager and the directors to address your questions. Uh, item number one, city manager. Uh, item number one is the uh, general fund budget uh, follow-ups. Mr. LeCourage, would you present us with your follow-ups? Yes. Um, there'll be two steps in this, really. The first step is, and thanks to Irene for great notes, and sorry for sending it out so late today. I meant to get it out earlier, but situations um, happened. I had to send it out later. A little summary of some of the requests. Um, Irene was good enough to, to make, take good notes on it. Um, what I sent you today, I tried to put on the side of it either the funding or some possible other fundings to try to to try to do everything that was on on the list of each person. Obviously, we had two hundred and forty seven thousand. Um, but Ron uh, took Commissioner Vatikiotis's insurance money to add to that. So it's about two hundred and fifty seven thousand um, to add to it again, give or take. Um, Pretty much from the list, as you can see, there's, you know, again, if you divide it up by math in 50,000 a piece, there's at least 50,000 in most of them. Of course, to Commissioner Tarapani was a little bit more general with money from grants and brick and mortar beautification. I'm sure we can clear that out. Um, on uh, the one issue of the salaries, I would probably try to find the salary monies for city clerk and deputy city clerk. I'd probably look elsewhere as I do my final presentations on salaries, which remember for salaries and everything, it's not only in our budget meeting, but I come to you the first meeting of September um, for you to approve it because you have to approve it by resolution. Or I forgot how you have to approve it and stuff. So I know there wanted to be some further discussion on the sister city program on this list. Um, obviously on vice mayor cars, um, there are some amounts I weren't sure of like the spring by you all, but um, identified a couple. I found some other places for them to be funded, and then it would just be a situation of what we spent on the additional items. Um, Commissioner Dot, we have very little in rec impact fee, but we have a little bit. So if we need a little more money, there would be an option of twenty thousand for those basketball courts to come out of impact fees. But um, there's, there's very little left, but that would be an option um, with these projects. And again, um, 
we've got a general, uh, our IT and town functions, especially IT, we're working on the SpongeDoc sound system um, in lighting. Um, we've done some preliminary stuff. There's a lot of different versions of rudimentary to advanced that we'll have to look at some more. But basically, that's why you see such a wide range of figures when more work is done. That's something that has to be brought back to you because there's so many variations and additions we could do with that. Um, they need a little more time to work on it, but I gave you an approximate there. Um, I do also know from the last meeting, I do need to try to find money for that Safford House painting. Um, going back and talking with Tom and them, this was something that before COVID, we thought we could get in the budget this year. Um, and then of course, with the manpower and the money losses, um, why it ended up on the standby list or I think that's what they called or whatever list uh, Ron deemed it. Um, it got on there because we couldn't do it within the budget this year and it will be needed. So I need to find that money, but you know, there may be some other monies I can find that from. There's also, uh, thanks to Commissioner Vatikiotis reminding us, there is a dissimetry study that needs to be done that I'm gonna need to at least put a placeholder of probably 50,000 per the charter. So, but those two things I'm looking for within the budget we got, not in the but in the money that we talked to you about. But those are some things uh, before the final budget I need to try to look for and find um, besides the items you see. I know it's not much money, but as the county administrator told me, they never were able to get to the county commissioner's wish list because not only was there no ability for their wish list, but they had to go into their budget and cut 10 to 15 percent of what they had thought they could have. So while we're not in the greatest of shape, other places are worse and we do have some money um, to spend in this area. Um, as you get to the later ones, the CIP, the penny, obviously we've got some money committed and we don't have much leeway there this year. And fortunately the circumstances, we don't have much money available, but um, that's kind of a summary in the first part of uh, what we talked about last week. If there's any questions on this list or discussions among yourselves about, about this list. And then just the second part of the, and when we finish that, um, all the department heads are available and waiting. If there are any other questions on the general fund that didn't get asked of the department heads last meeting, they're all available. So we can finish that up with any unanswered questions. Um, in the emails that were sent to you today, there were some questions I asked that we did answer, but if there's more clarifications of those additional ones, um, they're ready to answer that, and then we should be finished with the general fund budget. Thank you, Mr. Likouris. Uh I'd like to uh, look at the uh, follow-up follow uh, general fund list that you provide us, and we discussed that. I will start with my... Uh, uh, items that are presented during the last meeting. Um, I requested to have uh, $30,000 for the senior center for the community center. I'd like to remind to everyone that 25.4% uh, of our population is over 65 years old. And we, this is something that we must provide to our seniors to have a place where they can actually have a senior center information plus a place where they can gather and socialize and uh, get different programs that available to the seniors. The other thing that I had requested was $20,000 to be included for the sister city to sign in. Uh, as you know, we process of doing a sign in for uh, three cities, Kanya, Elida, and Hydra, which he was uh, authorized uh, a couple of meetings ago. Uh, Vice Mayor Carr had a question about what the city, uh, Sister City program was all about. So um, one of, uh, I think that was Sister City Committee sent an email and explained some of the things that uh, the, the Sister City has been providing to the Tarpa Springs and the things that we're doing. The reason why we, uh, I requested $20,000 is because this is actually, this is uh, a process as you know, we process to create a partnership, a signing process is two parts. One is for the cities, other cities to come to Tarper Springs and then we go to their cities. So there'll be th three trips because uh, we're gonna have mayors from three different cities to come here. And what I was thinking is to combine all these three cities. So one 
we make one trip from here to the cities there. So this is how we come up with the $20,000. Any questions on that? I would like to uh, answer it. Vice Mayor Carr, you had a question on the uh, uh, what the city assist the city program was all about. Was that satisfactory? The letter that you received from the uh, committee. I mean, it it just discussed uh, what happens with the sister city. I just I don't know. I don't think we need to place as high of a twenty thousand dollar holder on that uh, for a trip overseas. It's actually um, but four, it's going to be four trips. Four trips. It's Thirty. It's Thirty as well, Vice Mayor. On Mark's sheet, it shows that it's 20, I think. And then the senior center shows it's 30. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry, you're right, you're right, you're right. Just 20. Yeah. So so Tarpon Springs pays for these sister cities to come over to, to the United States. Is that correct? Well, actually, they pay for their ticket, but the expenses here uh, that, you know, hotels and stuff like that, uh, we really don't know exactly what, what's going to cost. So we assume it's going to be $20,000 for all the three sister cities. Okay. I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to have really exactly a number that I can give you other than just sure. give you a good guess. Okay. Uh, I'm curious to hear what the rest of the commission has to say. Um, from the senior center, I, I'm happy to, to support that for sure. Moving forward. Uh, I hope to be there at some point in my life as well um, to, <laughs> to be there and socialize. So um, I'm happy to support that mayor. Okay. Before. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's also two more things that I'd like to cover before we go to your uh, commission comments. Also requested a $3,000 donation for the Nerbally Care, that's the Meals on Wheels. And also $3,000 contribution to the Homeless Leadership Alliance. This is the um, uh, commission Donovan is serving on this board, representing us. So uh, this is the reason why I request the uh, uh, the rest of that uh, 3,000 and 3,000, 6,000 6, for the two agencies. Um, Commission Terrapani, do you have any comments on these four items? On uh, on your uh, wish list, Mayor, as far as the, what we're talking about so far, I mean, you know, <clears throat> I think the Sister Cities is a great program. Um, I think if we continue to, to grow it, you know, it's going to end up costing us more and more money. Um, I, I think that you've done a great job with it as as you've been mayor, uh, and I do think that it is important, being that we're such a, a, a rich community in terms of culture. Um, I, I do. I will tell you though that I favor some of your other initiatives a little bit more. Um, I, I like the idea for the senior center, and I definitely like the idea for the uh, neighborly meals on wheels delivery. Um, I would be more inclined to fund something that would uh, have more of a direct impact on, you know, our local community. Um, even if, you know, I think another one of your initiatives is uh, the transportation for the elderly. Um, yeah. Do we, is that in the budget this year? Well, actually we, uh, it didn't cost us anything the last time the way mm -hmm. it was set up. Uh, I need to address it again because due to the, uh, Coronavirus has stopped. We were not allowed to do that. I need to address it again. But the last time is actually didn't cost us anything for it. Is it possible to address it in this budget cycle? Um, I probably will. Yes. I can uh, reach I out would, to you. Uh, I would be more in favor of, of putting the 20 towards something along those lines as far as broader, broader reach within our community. Um, but I mean, I'm not going to not support the Sister Cities program. I just think that over the course of time, it's going to continue to grow as a budgetary item. And I think that your initiatives as it relates to the Meals on Wheels and transportation for the elderly takes more of a, a little bit more of a precedent in my mind. Uh, are you not willing to fund anything on the uh, Sister City program? No, I mean, we. this is an addition to, correct? Well, addition to that? Okay. Well, I'm saying the twenty thousand dollars is in addition to what we already have budgeted. We haven't budgeted anything. Yeah, oh, okay. there's none. I, I thought. I'm sorry. I thought we annually budgeted. No, uh, actually, for the sister cities. Commissioner Terrapani, in the past, a lot of those expenses are paid out of our pocket. Yeah, I know. I just remember. I'm going if off the that. I thought that in previous years we had. We always, talked about it, but we never really done it. I thought we have always funded. To you know, not a lot of money, but I thought that yeah. we had always funded the sister cities program. Yeah, 
in that case, yeah, I'm willing to support it for sure. I thought that there was this was twenty thousand dollars in addition to no, money no. that was already budgeted. No, we talked about it, but we never went through that. I got you. Yeah. So you also want to uh, uh, support the uh, senior transportation too? I think it's important, Mayor. I mean, I see it, you know, in my business every day. Um, let me let me uh, do some more investigation on that, and I bring it to the uh, I bring it to you to the next meeting. How's that? That sounds, that sounds good, Mayor. Okay. I still think we have plenty of Advent Health funding for that senior transportation program. I'll check and make sure, but I think we've got ample funding available whenever. COVID starts it up again, and I think it'll probably get us through the year with COVID. I, I think we're, I think we'll be fine, but I'll check on that for sure. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Terrapandi, last year we had a sponsor, and that was the hospital. So we'll make sure that they were still going to be sponsoring this program. Yeah, I mean, even if you even remember, if we have yeah, to, yeah. I do now. It's coming back to me. Even if yeah. we have to give a little bit just to show our buy-in, I definitely. Yes. And it's something that I remember that you worked on, you know, for many years. And finally, last year was a breakthrough. And I think it was important. So I'm, I'm in to continue to support that for sure. I, I really thank you for uh, reminding me that and supporting that effort. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, of course, happy to support the, uh, the three grand each to Meals on Wheels and the HLB. Uh, thank you for bringing both of those up. Um, in regards to the senior center, you know, I've always admired your passion for helping our seniors. And I think that'll go a long way towards connecting them to different resources and, and building connections within them themselves. So I think, um, you know, senior center and the two donations are great uses of money. Um, as far as the sister cities goes, um, also, you know, really like what that program's all about. And I was very pleased with the letter that we received as additional backup. Um, and that letter, that letter talks a little bit more about, you know, some of the ed educational and scholarship opportunities. I just wanted to know what, the, what is that $20,000 that we're budgeting actually going to be spent on? Is it going to be spent on, you know, different brochures and educational materials and scholarships or well, actually, actually, would it be more we, so uh, Commissioner, as we, uh, as I explained earlier, as we process of creating partnerships with uh, three uh, sister cities. And if you remember, uh, a couple of meetings ago, it was approved by the board to um, create a sister cities program with uh, Hanya, Elida, and uh, Idra. Uh, this is actually a two-part process in order to, to create this partnership. They, we have to go there to sign it, and also they have to come here. So that's where the uh, $20,000 expenses came. So would we be paying for both? Are we paying to bring them here and no, no. go over there? They are, they they be, they're going to be paying for their uh, air, uh, you know for their transportation and all to come here. But once they get here, we pay for the expenses, hotels, and all those things. Okay. And just uh, I'm repeating myself, but the last meetings, I mean, the last sister series that we have, all the trips that I made. Uh, the city didn't pay anything. I always pay for my buy. Yeah, I understand that. Of course, really appreciate that. Um, I'm I'm more in in terms of you know kind of what I think the vice mayor was getting at that maybe you know for the first go we we kind of budget a little bit less, maybe like fifteen thousand or something like that. Because I understand the importance of the program, um, but just if, in terms of travel, I, I've just um, you know I'd, I'd rather see more of that money stay here in Tarpon. Well. If you want to reduce it to fifty thousand dollars, I mean that's that's up to the board to decide to do that. You know, uh, I guess I don't have an exact number where I can actually suggest uh, twenty thousand dollars will be there uh, budgeted, and it's up. You know, whatever we spend, if, whatever we don't spend is going to stay there. I understand that, yeah, and I'm I'm not trying to penny pinch you or, or die on the sale. It's just it's more a matter of we you know we don't know what we're going to spend because we haven't budgeted for this before. But again, okay. I mean, I'm happy to support the senior center and the uh, the two donations. I think those are all great ideas. Okay, Commission Vaticiotos. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, let me take these one at a time. Um, last year, uh, did we or did we not? 
uh, offer the uh, donation for the uh, neighborly and the HLA. I think some of those things were cut out. I was a little disappointed with that. So I don't have a problem supporting that part. Um, and of course, some of that's going to be offset with Advent Health. But do you recall whether we took those out of the budget last year? At about the same time, I guess, it was one of these things of looking, um, scrounging around actually for a few thousand here and there, uh, which were a little bit of different situation now. But um, can you answer that or maybe the city manager? Yes, I believe we did both of them at that, at that amount last year. Is that right, Ron? Yeah, we did the homeless leadership three thousand dollars. We paid that, and we've done the neighborly services for two thousand dollars in this current fiscal year. Okay. I think what you're recalling, Commissioner, is I think we the homeless leadership used to be ten, maybe. Yes. And I think we reduced that last year from ten to three. Okay. No, I I don't have a problem with the six thousand. I just uh, I've always liked to ask questions to see what we're doing, and I think that's good. Um, the sister city program. Let me let me interrupt you, Costa, uh, Commissioner Vaticuris. Uh, Meals on Wheels is probably the best program that anybody can experience. When you go there, you'd be surprised how happy the people are when you actually deliver the meal to them. Yeah, no, no, I know. Uh, I remember when I was uh, city manager and we operated. Yeah, I interrupted you. I'm sorry that I've done that, but it's. It's very dear to my heart, you know. I, know. I, I don't have an issue with that, and, and I'd like to learn more about that program. Um, a lot of our seniors suffer. We don't know they're suffering because they're very proud people. And if they don't have relatives, they're, you know, they're, we're not going to know about it. So I, I'd like to explore that more. Um, I remember 25 years ago, it was very successful, and we did what we could at that time. And I'm very happy to support it this time, too. So... And by the way, they're looking for uh, volunteers to deliver. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um, the Sister Cities program, Mayor, is this going to be a grant to the organization or is this going to be something that they submit to us or we actually pay for things um, through uh, Mr. Jackis as an example or Mr. Herring? Uh, air, uh, you know, airline or uh, hotels and things like that. Do we uh, are, are we talking about the uh, the sister cities program? The sister city program? No, that's not a grant. You just pay expenses as they come in along. No. Okay. So this would be up to twenty thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. I don't. You, you know, I think this evening what we're going to find is many of the things that we're going to talk about. We really don't have an exact number. And I think it's it's a wise thing to set a ceiling. And um, I know how travel expenses are, but the flights are the biggest part of it. And once dignitaries get here, much of that expense is picked up by other people in the communities as well. So, um, and and on these expenses, Mayor, up you know, up, let's say up to twenty thousand uh, dollars, are individual things going to come? to us for approval or is this something that is going to be automatic uh through well if i if we haven't approved uh if we haven't approved if i have an approval now as the expenses come we just go ahead and pay it again we don't know exactly how much it's going to be we assume that we're going to need twenty thousand dollars well how are we going to keep tabs on this as a commission we can actually create a spreadsheet and make sure everybody has a uh, be doing, you know, email to everyone. Okay. I, you know, for me, this is new. And um, we're, we're supposed to be working on the plans and policies. I spoke briefly to the city clerk about it. I think the city attorney's involved. <laughs> you started it. So I know you're, you're in the lead on this thing. But I'd also like to see the plans and policies um, uh, on what the sister cities. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Commissioner Tikiotis, because as I mentioned the last uh, two meetings ago, uh, when I asked for the approval for the new sister cities, uh, uh, City Attorney Trask has been working on that mm -hmm. for the uh, policy and procedures on that. It has not, it's not been completed. Uh, also, our city uh, clerk has been working on that as well. Okay. Uh, I can't give you a date when it's going to be ready when it's going to be finished, but they're working on that. I, I'm, I'm not sure how, I mean, I, I, I know 
it's a challenging situation. I was at the last sister city's annual meeting, which was a very big success. I've not met any of the dignitaries that have come over here. So um, I'm, I'm just, I, I want to support this. I'm not completely ready just to say, take the 20,000 and, and just pay for everything as it comes in. I'd like for there to be a little tighter control so we can actually see how this is going to develop until our procedures and policies are, are approved by the commission. Um, I'm not sure how that can be set up by the city manager, but I'd like for there to be some accountability um, for the $20,000 if the commission agrees to move ahead with that. What do you suggest? How do you suggest? Well, I, I think something that uh, very similar to a consent agenda item that comes forward. I mean, I, I, um, I think when you've got a person, let's say the three mayors come over here at the same time as you're describing it, um, there's going to have to be a budget for them. I don't think that we're just going to just wait until after they're gone to see what the expenses are. I don't think that's a real smart thing to do, especially when it's city money. I don't have a problem supporting them or anything like that. But there's going to be a big difference when you're paying for a motel room on Clearwater Beach at $500 a night than what you have here at the Holiday Inn in Tarpon Springs. And that's the thing I want to avoid. Um, I, I, we're not an extrav extravagant city, and I just want to avoid that. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Um, that would be real easy to bring those things. Do you designate for that fund to bring those things <clears> to <throat> come up to the board? That, that, would be, that would be easy to do if that's the wishes of the board. I've got an extra room in my house. I've, I've got a question, Mayor. <laughs> Mayor, can I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> Mark, have, have we never budgeted for the sister cities before? Am I just dreaming that, that I've seen that in the past budgets? No, if you remember the sister cities, the 5013, remember they're, you know, they do various fundraisers stuff, but we have never, I can't remember budgeting any money um, for that um, in a regular uh, budget. Well, it, 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 let me uh, explain that. The, uh, the committee is 501C, but not the program. The program is belong to the city of Tarpon Springs. Yeah, that's what I thought. Where's you the payroll? Are you there? Yeah, but the city never really budgeted anything. The city never spent anything. Uh, it was always the committee that were trying to raise money whatever, any way we could. So we not, uh, so the city doesn't have to pay anything for it. That's how it's been. All, all this time, Ron, you've had no no line item in your in your recollection in no, years past. I no, I haven't seen anything for the sister cities. Hmm. Now that's gonna I'm gonna pick my brain all night trying to think. Yeah, so Commission Chair Penn, we talked about it, but we never done it. Yeah, that's my. I don't know what I'm recalling, Mayor. I mean, I'm going back, you know, several yeah. years, but uh, sure. <clears throat> I, I just. I just want to put some safeguards in there. That's all. I, I understand some of the difficulty in coordinating these trips and issues of that nature. Uh, I do know people come forward and insist on somebody staying at their uh, condominium at Innisbrook, and that's absolutely fine. We wouldn't see an invoice for that. But on other instances, like, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, Mayor, I appreciate that. We, I think we've got six sister cities right now. I'd like to know who the uh, patriotes are, if you will, from Hanya and, and uh, Cyprus and things that live in Tarpon Springs. I mean, that's the thing I don't understand is how some of these cities have gotten onto the Sister Cities program. We've approved them, but I haven't seen anybody from within the city that says they've got relatives there, they've got friends or anything like that. Maybe there's a cultural thing I'm not aware of. Um, so I, I'd like to kind of grow into this. Um, and, and this year, like I said, I don't mind supporting something because of the difficulty. I'm just not ready to just turn $20,000 loose and, and pay for everything as it comes in without the commission knowing about it. I, I, I think the city manager recommended an approach which would be fine with me. Um, I, I'm trying to support you, Mayor, but I've got in good conscience, I just don't want to turn $20,000 loose on something we've never funded before. And I, I really don't understand at this point uh, what's gonna happen. Actually, I, I appreciate your uh, recommendation to have safeguards because I don't want anything to be That's loose right. as you know that. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, we do, it's something that we do not have any process completed yet. Mm -hmm. And this is something that uh, we're going to be getting soon. Uh, the city attorney is working on that. And I'm sure he's going to have some of that. Uh, when they, uh, the process is completed, of course, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be on the agenda for us to, uh, you know, to discuss it and approve it before we go any further with that. Okay, so we're, what, what are we going to do with this? Well, we'll talk about that. Okay, so let me get my comments out of the way. The other thing is the senior center. Um, I heard what you said last week, but exactly um, what are we going to do with this $30,000? Is that going to be a brick and mortar uh, uh, renovation or? Uh... I will uh, ask Mr. Lequeurs to, uh, to answer the question exactly what what's going to take to convert the room that we have already there at the community center in order to have that. Yes, most of that would be to build an office within one of the buildings there um, to move the volunteers that we have um, from the library, which they're in cramped spaces and not much room. So probably most of it is to reconfigure the rooms for meetings, um, for offices. Again, some of the conversations with senior, seniors need to be private. So most of it's the It'll be in-house construction of our in-house people, probably putting an office uh, within one of our buildings in the community center. Probably that built when you walk in the far north door and go to the right, that uh, meeting room in there was what we had talked about a while ago to do and probably be <clears throat> one of the corners for the office and then configure the room uh, for a combination um, conference type room and offices for our volunteers um, that work with the seniors. Okay, so um, would that be a uh, uh, basically a maintenance expense or a general fund expense, or would that be something out of the CIP as a building improvement? It, it would probably it probably be the general fund in okay. in public works. It'd probably yeah. be in one of the public works projects. Yeah, I mean, do you think that's going to cost thirty thousand dollars, or is there something else that, uh, I, Mayor, is there something else that you have in mind besides these modifications that the city manager is talking about? Uh, not really. I'm just looking for a place where the seniors will be able to to get there to to, uh, to be like a uh, senior information center and a place where the seniors can go and gather and uh, go through the programs and get uh, services that's available to them. Okay, now the 30,000 is your number, Mayor, or is that the, something that the city manager staff This is something that came from the city manager because I'm not sure about what's going to cost. Okay, uh, city manager, of course, um, you think it's going to cost 30,000 what you just described, given we're going to use in-house uh, labor or not labor, but skilled? That, that's what we we're thinking. We we're thinking twenty five to $30,000 to do to renovate that room. Okay, I, I think it... <laughs> um, same manager, of course, just as a just clarification, we used to have the community center with the seniors programs out of that 25 years ago. What ever happened to those programs? I mean, we used to have that whole side of the room, the building um, used up by senior centers. The cat, the uh, cat, the uh, I'm sorry, the uh, kitchen was there and people would eat there and think that that doesn't happen anymore. Is that right? Oh, we've been bringing the, the last last year we. When we started the, the program with seniors, the last two years, in fact, uh, we've been converted. We've got some of the dance people that were dominating a lot of that. We've got them out of there um, because it's not only to get this office set up and get that, but we're expanding uh, senior programming throughout that whole community center from the gym to the room with the kitchen to all of that. One of our emphasis is obviously to increase our youth programs and to increase our senior program and less rely on the, the rentals, the dance rentals, um, providing services um, for the people who most, most need it instead of, you know, it's nice to generate the revenue those things do, but they take up the room for some of the activities. You remember that you can go on there a lot. Um, they take up their space. So we have taken the last year or so kind of moving those programs out and we want to bring those programs either and get over there and again have the office space and stuff to to move the the two the the volunteers that usually work at and work out of the cramped corners of the library and uh, move them into their own office over the community center where all these things are going on okay 
I, I, I'm glad that you got a handle on it. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, it's long. It, 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 you've cost it out uh, with Mr. Function, I'm sure. So, mm -hmm. Mayor, I'm comfortable with that. I, I agree. The library is not the place for a senior center. Uh, 25 years ago, we had a very active program, square dancing and all that other stuff went on. And I think people were generally happy. They actually would hang out <laughs> and have coffee there rather than going to Panera. So, um, and I think right now it's just a safer environment for them as well and a cheaper environment. I'm, I'm, I'm for that one, Mayor. Okay. Just to make sure, um, on the senior, on the senior center, um, Vice Mayor Carr, is that yes with the, with that amount? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Commission Terrapani, just to make sure again. On the senior center mayor? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. And Commissioner Vaticuris, you already said yes, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the next item was the uh, the sister city signing in expenses for Hanya, uh, Elida, and Idra. Vice Mayor Carr. Yeah, Mayor. Uh, I mean, through our discussions, I realized that this is just a placeholder that we don't really know what the costs are going to be. Um, so it being a placeholder and this being the first year, I'm I'm fine with approving what you've requested, Mayor. Um, I, I just want, again want to say thanks for taking the lead on this one and um, making an effort to really expand our relationships with the city. Um, I'm I'm interested to see what the um, the process and the program looks like when it comes back to us here in the next couple months. I think we could refine this a little bit further, but from a placeholder standpoint, I'm fine with seeing that as a placeholder. I don't think we're going to hit that number, but um, I, I'm I'm good with it. Thank you, Commissioner Terrapani. <clears throat> I think the you know Vice Mayor is hitting it well on the head in terms of it being a placeholder, right? I, I mean, personally, I feel like everything that we're discussing discussing right now should be kind of just a placeholder until we get through this budget in its entirety. I mean. I yeah. said last week that, you know, basically the same thing, which is, you know, we might have plus money to play with. We might have less money to play with once we go through the entire budget. So conceptually, I'm good with everybody's ideas, you know, in this go around of the budget stage until we start to actually, you know, vote and approve things like right now we can't even vote. So I'm happy to to give consensus to everything until we go through the entire budget and we redline what we want to redline and we put things in that we want to put in. I mean. Okay. I'm looking at the capital improvement budget right now, you know, with all kinds of questions as it relates to things that might be able to wait or we might be able to flip flop. And until we go through the budget, we won't know. All right. Commissioner Donovan. I'm, I'm good with that, Mayor. I'm good with all your Thank all your you. requests. Thank you. Commissioner Vaticuris. I, I think that, that the approach is going to be, and maybe Ron can correct me, but basically booking it as a liability. In other words, it's on the books that we could be liable up to $20,000 and rent it out as the year goes on. That, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the other two items was uh, the uh, $3,000 for the uh, neighborly care and $3,000 for the homeless leadership alliance. <laughs> Car. Yeah, um, the neighborly care, I'm happy to support. Uh, I would rather see the other 3,000 go to both of the, I'm sorry, I'd rather the whole 6,000 go to neighborly care and not homeless leadership board. Um, I would rather potentially, I've got some ideas for proposed tonight um, as well, that we can work with our homeless here locally and not just send all the money down to St. Pete to be used. So yes for the homeless. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes to the neighborly, and I'm even okay increasing it, and no to the homeless leadership. Okay, Commissioner Terrapani. I did know what uh, Vice Mayor said as far as uh, taking the homeless leadership three thousand and putting it towards the Meals on Wheels. Okay, Commissioner Donovan. I support your original proposal of the three grand for HOB, three grand for Meals on Wheels. Thank you. Commissioner Tikiotis? Um, Mayor, um, I, I think I'd like to take the approach. I, I don't have a problem uh, <clears throat> thousand for the neighborly, if that's would help. 
Um, I'm not ready just to say no to the HLA. I don't know enough about it. <laughs> I think when it was brought up last, when we were talking about the benches at the library, that was the first time I recalled something about uh, Commissioner Donovan being on another committee. But I'll be honest with you, other than what he mentioned, I, I really don't know anything about it. And there seems to be a reluctance on Vice Car Mayor and also um, Commissioner Terrapani about supporting that. And it just sends up a flag. And I'd like to learn a little more about that. Uh, I don't have a problem with reserving um, <clears throat> as you're suggesting. Um, and I don't have a problem with bumping up the, the uh, neighborly senior services up to $6,000. But I, I just don't want to make a green light on the HLA, HLA until I learn a little more about it. Commissioner Donovan, can I ask you uh, again to give us an explanation about what the Homeless Leadership Alliance is doing and what does the offer? So I think I think in the essence of time, it might be best if I just send you guys um, some of their material as far as you know what what they're doing day to day and kind of a map of. Uh, how they geographically distribute what they're doing. Um, I think just for the essence of time, knowing you know where we are now, when the meeting ends tonight, I can just send you guys something after the meeting. Okay. But I mean, if you have, if you just say a few words about it, perhaps we'll make a easier to decide on that. I don't. I don't know that we have consensus right now, anyway. So okay. I think you know we can pump the brakes on it for now. I was going to say, Mary, it's two and a half, two and a half. I'm, I'm on the fence with this thing. And I might be very well happy with it if I learned a little more about it. That's all. And I think uh, that map that Commissioner Donovan was talking about would be very important for me to see what happens. Um, if, if it goes according like everything else, a lot of things stay down in South County. And that's not what I'm looking for either. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, we've got uh, some issues here. And we'll, hopefully we'll be looking at a workshop to go over that. And maybe then we can see what our uh, actually role is in the H HLA as well at that time. So um, I think Commissioner Donovan's approach is the best one. And you're suggesting that uh, okay. um, it's something. It's just that we have uh, a commission represented us on the board, you know. Well, I, I understand. I, I'd like to know a little more about it. I mean, sure. I, yeah. Okay. Well, that's all I have, Mr. Likurs. We're, I just want to say, um, at this pace, um, we're not going to get through this item tonight. I don't, I don't know if we should look at the rest of this list and just look at the list as a whole and see if there's any problems. But remember, after next Monday night, there's not much time to come up before the public hearings. We, we, we don't have much time besides tonight and Monday night um, to finish this thing. So in the sake of time, um, maybe we need to look over all the rest of the items and see where there's a problem or Again, we're not going to get through general fund tonight. Commissioner Carr, I mean, uh, Vice Mayor Carr, yes, the, uh, the uh, next is your items there. Do you want to talk about them or you want to summarize what you uh, requested? Yeah, I mean, this is just a high level. Um, the items <laughs> that I request are more of a um, just beautification efforts around Tarpon Springs. Um, as a whole, and uh, unifying the signs uh, from city buildings to um, street signs and some other aspects. Uh, I think there are some items that are long overdue that we should be addressing. Um, so, I mean, I, I would appreciate everyone's support on that. Um, in addition to, I sent an email out um, about the homeless, um, and we've talked about uh, our last commission meeting, some ideas. Um, I, I would like to see some type of placeholder um, of something that we could do this year for the homeless and address the homeless. Um, I guess the best way of saying it is like have a homeless area or I don't want to call it a center, but like a homeless, a building for where the homeless could come and, and congregate um, being safe, has air, air conditioning and a bathroom for them to use. Um, and it also could give an opportunity for the churches to use that as an area where they could come together and have their, um, their meals that they're giving, um, to the homeless or even just people in Tarpon Springs that are looking that could use a free meal, a hot meal. So, um, that would be something in addition to that I would like to, to have 
added uh, in the budget this year? Uh, we had Director uh, Mr. Lequeris to uh, to schedule a meeting in a month or two to discuss that. Um, and I believe that uh, that will be the, the you know the best time to to talk about it. Um, and a lot of those items there, maybe we need to have a workshop uh, to discuss them because some of them they can be done, in, uh, they can be financed in a different in a different ways. Yeah. And I also guess we could we could probably go to the homeless leadership um, association or board too and request funds for Tarpon Springs as well um, from the funds that are received from the county for the projects that we potentially could be looking at in North County. Um, but yeah, the city manager is pretty clear. There's some other opportunities for beautification through the tree fund, through the CRA, um, in that aspect. <clears throat> Excuse me, in that aspect. Um, so overall, though, I mean, I think they're important. I think these are some important things to look at in the city. Well, I, I'm supporting the things that you have uh, uh, on your list there. But uh, I will leave it up to uh, Mr. Lequeris. And of course, uh, we need to have consensus from the board. But uh, if we discuss that during the uh, the workshop, uh, Mr. Lequeris can find a different ways to, uh, to finance them, like uh, the trees. We've got the tree fund. The you know, verification can be done with CRA if it is part of the CRA. If not, it can be in a different way. But that's great ideas. You just, we just need to uh, analyze them and discuss them in a workshop. That's my opinion. Um, I'm good with that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commission Terrapani, any comments on that list of uh, Vice Mayor Carr? Sure. Just, <clears throat> just quickly, Mayor. Um, you know, again, I support everybody's initiatives conceptually. Um, I think, like we're starting to say, some of this money is going to shake out from other funding sources. Um, but uh, as, regarding the signs, I think we all know that that uh, is a pretty broad. Uh, discussion as far as what we want them to look like and where we want them to go and where we want them to start first. Um, so I, I think y'all are right as far as having a, a workshop specifically on that. Um, I do have one question as far as like the historic, some of the historic signs that we have been working on, um, the monuments, is that in this year's budget, Mark? Yes. And uh, the next year, again, of the many uh, meetings that we need to schedule and stuff. We need, there's a lot of issues we need to discuss in the CRA. The only reason the last CRA meeting wasn't long because we knew the commission meeting was going to be long. But yeah, there, yeah, there are some funding. Uh, Karen's ready to give a report on the historic signs and some of the other signs. She's ready to report of where we are and close to purchasing. We've got most of the wording approved by the property owners. We got, you know, I think one more main one we have to call, but, uh, uh, the next available CRA money, CRA meeting, we'll talk about all the things that we've got funded now in, in this budget, not the one you're looking at for after October um, to bring forward and finish. We're close to finishing a lot of those things and getting to the point of ordering them and getting them up. So she's ready to give that presentation. The, the next CRA meeting we can uh, have to attach to a meeting that's not going to be you know long. Sounds good. Um, the, <clears throat> the only other thing. Um, on uh, the vice mayor's list that, you know, I would want to maybe talk about more, which doesn't, it's not as much of a con concern for me to take them out right now would be the ball bouts on alternate 19. Um, I know that, you know, they're not desirable to some folks and some people, you know, we hear all the time that they smash them. Um, you know, they've definitely claimed many a tire, I'm sure. Um, but I think they, you know, act a little bit as a, as a traffic calming, you know, they slow traffic down a little bit and uh, the amount of rework to, to take them out and then basically create a patch. Um, I just would want to consider that a little bit further. Um, but other than that, you know, again, happy to support everybody's uh, initiatives conceptually. Mr. Lequeris, excuse me. Uh, I just, uh, go ahead, uh, Vice Mayor Carr. Yeah, I just want a clarification. On the third item down, it says additional historic building signs. Um, that was the one I meant, like the, the signs that we we're planning on putting in front of like Silver King out at Sunset Beach, Spring Bayou, where it has like the historicness of the, that piece of property itself. I think the golf course is going to have one. So there's some additional areas in Tarpon Springs. So that was my thought process behind that. Not necessarily the plaques and the buildings, 
but actually it's the, the, was it the historic uh, league of historic cities in the city of, or state of Florida or something along those lines that produces, provides the signs. That's the one I was talking about. I think we're putting 12 out this year. And we talked about funding it this coming budget season for additional signs that we couldn't make because of the budget this past year. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Donovan, any comments on the uh, list of uh, Vice Mayor Carr? Yeah, I absolutely support all the beautification efforts that you mentioned, uh, Vice Mayor. I really appreciate the detailed backup email that you sent as well. Uh, just going through through those a little bit more in specifics. Um, I agree to wait on the homeless stuff um, until that scheduled meeting. But as far as all the beautification efforts go, I'm happy to support you on that. Thanks. Thank you. Commission with the coders. Um, I think I would too, as long as I know what the dollars are associated with each one. Um, it's the same issue that I had with the uh, uh, sister city program and the senior center. And I'm hoping we can kind of get a little better resolution on that. Um, I've got some questions myself on the spring bayou wall. Uh, as far as I know, all that's on private property and we've got an easement on that property. And I don't believe those walls belong to us. I think they belong to each of the property owners that live across the street in that area. So <laughs> there's some things that I need to think about as far as all of this, but certainly let's move them ahead. I think that um, you'll see one of my uh, items for the downtown um, involves uh, kind of a bulb out. It's actually a, 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 a uh, just a pathway to get across the street at Tarpon, um, on Tarpon Avenue, uh, so that'll that'll hang in there on that one and get down there. But I, I I think we need to do a wholesale beautification of many areas of our town. I think this fits in with that. But I just like to learn a little more about it. Thank you. I'm I'm glad you brought that up at the wall because this is what I was thinking. And uh, I remember years ago uh, I realized that you know that's easement that belong to the it's a private easement there. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, Mr. John Terrapani owns a portion of it that it goes all the way down to the sidewalk. Yeah, Tarpon Avenue, um, Tarpon Avenue, I'm sorry, the Tarpon Inn, Mr. Terrapani, the people that uh, bought Mr. Bill Arrakis's house on the corner, Villa Plumosa, Mary uh, Nexi, and, and I'm not sure whether um, uh, the people that own the house next to Mary uh, Nexi's, but it goes all the way down to where that wall ends is all on uh, property that we simply hold an easement for maintaining it. Yeah, but we do maintenance on it. We maintain the wall though. But if it gets to the point where we're tearing it down and replacing it with a different material, that might be a different, we're gonna need permission. For the, permission to do that, yeah. I would think, I would think, so. Thank you. Commissioner Carr, I mean, uh, Vice Mayor Carr, are you okay with the uh, comments that you got? Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. Now we'll move on to uh, Commissioner Tara Penny. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, I think, you know, as we as we continue to go through the budget, things will kind of hash out. Um, uh, do we have a, a number as to what we have funded in the grants right now with what's going to carry over from this fiscal year into 2021? Uh, Karen, are you on? Do you have those figures offhand? Or Ron, you may know. Uh, are you talking about when we budgeted twenty five thousand for facade grants? Yeah. Oh, Karen's. I, I see Karen coming up. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, we've got about sixty five thousand. Sixty five thousand currently funded for twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one. For for this current year. This current that year. That roll then, over. Okay, that rolls over. Oh. So we're, we don't have any money funded in addition to the 65,000, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and then within the 65,000, uh, what is the breakout for the grants? Is it just one pot that a facade grant and a uh, code, I forget what the name of it is, but the there's the restaurant conversion grant and then we also just did this new grant for the uh, <laughs> updates to the building, correct? Right, so the all, all three grants are put into one um, one item, the building code assistance grant was funded at 37 five mm -hmm. this last this last year. So that one um, is available for um, uh, grants of five thousand each. we've We've got two of them in the works right now. 
and the, the restaurant and the facade grants then um, would have the remainder of that. So 37.5 is set aside specifically for those building code assistance grants. But that's part of the 65, correct? Yeah, yes. Okay, so, so essentially we have 65,000 that three different grants can pull from. Correct. Okay, so <clears throat> the grants, you know, I can't speak well enough about the grants. The grants I, I've literally seen firsthand uh, help, you know, not only property owners uh, attract new long-term qualified tenants, help new tenants come into business. I mean, the, the grants, as it relates to those three different uh, grant funds or types of grants, have helped us uh, redevelop parts of our downtown astronomically. So I definitely, and it doesn't take much to eat those funds up, right? I mean, we've at this point probably funded it with probably going on a couple hundred thousand dollars over the, over the course of their existence. Um, and originally it just started with the facade grant. So if, if one two-story building applied for a facade grant, that's 15 grand. So if there's only $65,000 left, I would definitely encourage the board to try and uh, put some additional funds with, uh, make additional funds available uh, for those three types of grants that we have in existence. Um, and I would also encourage you, Ms. Lemons, to continue to try and consider new types of uh, business grants that might be helpful to businesses or property owners, um, given that we've seen, you know, the proof in this pudding. Um, so, you know, if if what I heard was, you know, we have about a quarter of a million dollars and divided by five, each commissioner theoretically has, you know, maybe 50 grand to make suggestions for before we continue to see where the budget shakes out. Um, I would suggest $25,000, uh, maybe $30,000 to uh, fund additional grants um, or for additional grant funds. Um, and then the brick and mortar beautification, you know, again, as we go through this budget, I mean, I have... I agree with, with y'all on many things, but let's say you fall short on some of your funding for one of your initiatives and it's a, and it's a brick and mortar or beautification initiative. I'd like to be able to, you know, uh, offer up or invite more funds for that. Right. So I, I really like commissioner Vaticiotis, this thing with the uh, sponge doc sound system. Um, I think that's a great initiative. So if, if he was to fall short on those funds, uh, I'm, I'm good with offering some more. Um, I think that we've, we're, we've started down the, the right path with some of our uh, cafe street lighting. Um, so I'd like to see some more of that from a, a beautification standpoint. Um, and I know that we can do a lot with our, uh, with our tree bank. So, you know, I'd continue to try and utilize those funds. Um, but if we were, you know, if it got down to it and we needed to budget some money um, and, and at a certain point after November, let's say we do get the Hoffman property and this board does decide that the Safford house is a logical move and a good fit for that property. Um, I'm, I'm good with devoting some funds to that move and to that beautification. Um, I know it's kind of putting the cart in front of the horse, but our fiscal year doesn't start until October anyways, and the votes in the beginning of November. So uh, I would be happy to earmark some funds for the Safford house as well. Um, and until we continue to go through the budget, Mayor, I don't, I don't have anything more uh, to talk about as far as my line items. Thank you. Commissioner Donovan. Um, are, we, are we looking for consensus on uh, Commissioner Terrapani's items or- You have two go? items there, right? Okay, so we're just moving on. I'm good with that, I, I, support, I support that. But um, if you're, are you asking me for my specific items? Yes. Okay. If you want to um, talk about it. Yep, sure. I got, I got two requests. I'll keep it short and sweet. It's uh, to replace the two basketball courts at Dorset Park for a total of $45,000 and to add additional field shade to our recreational fields for $20,000. If anybody has any questions or concerns, I'm happy to talk about it. It comes out okay. I support it. I don't have any issues. I support it too. Uh, Commissioner Terrapani? Uh, regarding the basketball courts and shade fields? Um, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I know that uh, at one point there was maybe some discussion among the board or maybe members of the public who 
wanted to have some discussion um, with the Riverside uh, tennis courts as far as uh, maybe putting some basketball hoops there. Um, Commissioner Donovan, when I first saw this item pop up, I thought maybe that was it. But this is strictly for Dorset Park. Is that right? Yes, it's just yes. replacing the two existing courts at Dorset. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any issue. Uh, Commissioner Terrapani, uh, I, I did ask the question about the, uh, the Riverside courts, and they say they was, they're going to be done this year. It's in the budget. For basketball? He's talking he's thought about something different, Mayor. I am? No, he's talking about a proposal that I think went away um, about making the tennis courts multi-purpose, and because in our comp plan we we're very deficient of tennis courts, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be something we'd be able to do and try to keep with our with our with our comp plan. So that was an idea that was brought up, but um, the idea before that it was pickleball courts that wanted to be a combination tennis and pickleball. The same reason we're deficient, um, and you know we get those numbers later from Renee and stuff, but. We are deficient in tennis courts, so you would not convert a tennis court into a multi-purpose court when you have a deficiency. So, so that's what he's talking about, the idea of the basketball combination tennis courts. That's right. Okay. Um, back into the, uh, the basketball uh, courts on the door set, we had a sinkhole there. Are those damages there? Is it due to the sinkhole? Um. Maybe partial. I, I don't think that much. We fixed all the things from the sinkhole, but um, I'm not saying that the ground and stuff might set up, but it, it's long overdue. Looking back on those courts and stuff, um, it's long overdue to redo those courts uh, for Dorset Park. Um, the reason so, I'm asking this question, Mr. LeCourter says, if it is involved with the sinkhole, can we uh, collect some insurance money on that? No, that was, that was, that was, uh, <laughs> Three or four years ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's too late, huh? But again, this is pretty much just the life of the of the court. That court hadn't been done in a while. As you know, we've done a lot of other revisions at Dorset Park, um, but that is, you know, the field. Like they said, you could bring the Blue Jays, could have played on the field and stuff. People saying we're very proud of what we did, but the the spot. Um, and, and I've heard it down in the down there at the park with the center about doing those courts. So it's something the citizens of the Union Academy neighborhood are hoping we will do because everything else pretty much is up to date in that park. That's the one item left to do. And this is a good opportunity to do it with this year's budget. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Tikiotis, any comments on that? Um, the request of uh, Commission Donovan? No, but let me just, yeah, I, I do, but let me back up with uh, Commissioner Tirapani. Um, I think on the beautification, the facade grants, we need to figure out a way to relax the requirements as he described. I mean, even if it's just painting the building, if you, we seem to be hung up on tans and buff colors and tarpon springs, and you go elsewhere, they're whites, blues, uh, different colors, and it just has a completely different look as you're going down one of the main avenues like Alternate 19 and Palm Harbor. So I'd like to talk about that a little more. But also um, everything with Commissioner uh, or Vice Mayor Carr, Commissioner Terrapani, Remember, we were talking about setting up a workshop also on planning and strategic planning and prioritizing. And I'm hoping we can roll everything in together and do some visioning as well to come up with something that is going to work rather than every year at a budget, we just keep throwing out our favorite projects, which need to be done, but we just, I don't think we're going to get there. And I've got more to say in the CIP when we do uh, talk about that. Um, as far as Commissioner Donovan, um, I, I don't have an issue with any of those. And, and I think those could be hard budgeted if those are the numbers that the city manager or, or the recreation department has uh, given them. So those are, are. Yeah, okay. And also I, I think that business of Riverside was in one of Vice Mayor Carr's memoranda, I believe. And um, I might be mistaken, but I thought I saw it this last time, but that's gonna be done. Is that correct, city manager of course? That's already budgeted? The the, uh, the tennis court netting. The tennis court, tennis court yeah, is budgeted. Rehabbing the tennis courts at Riverside. Rehab, rehabbing, yes, that is already budgeted. Okay, that's it on that, Mayor. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. 
Commissioner Tikiotis, yes. you want to discuss your wish list, please. Right. Um, Mayor, let me, um, let me start with the um, salaries first, because I think those are uh, real important. I'm going to share a screen, so I did put something together. Uh, we, we, we're talking about the salaries is something that we're going to be discussing later, isn't it? Mayor, I talked to the city manager about this, and you need to understand what I'm talking about before we do a broad stroke on September 1st or whenever it is after September 1st and approve everybody at the same time. And, and I talked about this when we were hiring uh, or approving Ms. Vincent's salary at $112,000. And I brought this up once before uh, saying that I was going to bring, bring this back. And I specifically asked the city manager of when we could talk about this. And, and actually he put this on the, uh, on the agenda. And I'm very happy that it's there because I, I've already done a lot of homework on this. And I want to demonstrate this isn't just something I'm pulling out of the air, just wanting to throw money out there. Well, this is item number five on the, uh, uh, this is part of the employee salary adjustment you're talking about, right? We haven't that's, got to that. Uh, well, 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 Mayor? Under Commissioner Patty Kiotis on the agenda that we're talking about right this minute. When you see yeah. it says increased salary city clerk slant deputy city clerk to be determined. And tonight's the night that we determine that. Go ahead. I'd like to proceed, Mayor, if you don't mind. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. That's fine. Um, First of all, um, I'd ask for an adjustment because I'm a little surprised with what the city clerk and deputy city clerk uh, were making. Uh, the city clerk is not even viewed as a department head. Um, both of them are 30 year employees. Both of them have been in their positions about 18 years, unlike any of the other city clerks in Pinellas County. And this I think is without exception, our city clerk and her department are not, is not only serves the city clerk function, but also is a collector. And um, in, in addition, she's a charter official. I wanna point out that I also looked at the need and scale, it tops out at $102,000, but that person is not a collector. She's simply a city clerk. Um, she was hired in 2019 at, at 96,000. So they've got a brand new person in that uh, position. I suspect her salary is more than that today. The previous one was only there for six years. We've got somebody that has tremendous knowledge and corporate history with Tarpon Springs, and both uh, she and the deputy city clerk are both in the same category as far as that goes. Um, their current salaries, their fiscal year 2020 salaries um, are $89,000. Um, at an 806, I'm sorry, $89,865. And the uh, city clerk is a wage grade 28. Uh, the deputy city clerk is at $78,938 at wage grade 21, respectively. I just uh, pointed out the clerk and deputy city clerk. Right now, in this current budget that you have in your hand, we're proposing salaries of $91,876 for the um, uh, city clerk and $79,000, uh, 79368 uh, for the deputy city clerk. What I'm proposing is to elevate the <clears throat> city clerk to a department head level, commensurate with her time at the city, and also the deputy city clerk equivalent to an assistant department head. So I spent some time with the city manager on how to do this and, and who can we use to model the longevity. And it was uh, our public services director was made public services director about the time that uh, the city clerk and the deputy city clerk uh, obtained their positions. He's pretty much up towards the top of his pay scale. Um, so this 112,575 is equivalent to what um, he is making, and also the deputy city clerk um, is is um, given the number of years that she's been an employee would be very close to the top of the um, wage grade 26, I believe is what I've got. And then, uh, so it, it, it's, it's kind of thought through. Um, the deputy city clerk, you need to recognize that the wage grade increase from a 21 to a 
26, I believe, I, my photo's covering that. So I think it's a 25 or a 26, um, is, is commensurate with what the tra traditional wage grade adjustment is with any kind of a reorganization. So if the, uh, if there's a, a bump of five steps going from a 21 to a 26, uh, traditionally the city manager has bumped their salaries up at 5% uh, for each step given the time and grade. And so for this particular case with deputy clerk, it's justified and her salary comes out at, at the, um, at the uh, 99,500. Um, and again, this effectively makes the city clerk a department head and the deputy city clerk an assistant department head. And the de deputy city clerk is, is closer to what you would see with our police majors having been longtime employees similar to her. Uh, they're both making in the $105,000 range. So we're, we're not looking at an extreme uh, uh, bump in salary for the deputy city clerk, but it does give them an adjustment of a salary that I feel that they're owed just because of, and they've been very shy. Um, they haven't been able to participate in the reorganizations that the city managers used for his own staff. I think they, over the last 18 years, they were, they participated in two reorganizations within their own department, but our own uh, department heads in, in the, um, under the city manager, um, whenever there's a need to do a salary adjustment, usually you'll see it under the guise of a reorganization. I'm not, that's not by any means a, a criticism. It's just a tool of how you go about adjusting salaries without going through the normal raises. And then the last thing is that, um, if the commission agrees with these salary levels, I'd like to also uh, make them um, condition on including whatever the BOC approves in the fiscal 2021 20, budget for the other uh, employees as well, whatever salary adjustment uh, under the normal wage grade um, and HR uh, scale goes as far as how we're handling uh, uh, other employees as well. So that's it, Mayor. I've thought this thing through. It's important to me. I think it's important to, I'm hoping it's important enough for you commissioners that you would agree with this and kind of recognize where we've kind of fallen short over the last many years, actually, of not bringing the clerks along. Um, you don't want them to leave. There's absolutely no uh, rattle. By the way, this is my initiative. Neither the city clerk or the deputy city clerk have put me up to this. This is just based on what I saw when we hired um, Ms. Vincent and I went through to determine what each of the department heads were making. And I would say that there's about five or six department heads that are making in the uh, 110, $112,000 range. And our city clerk was way down at the um, $89,000 range. So anyway, that's it, Mayor. It, on that well, one. You, you got some other things you wanna talk about? Yes, I do. Um, you got the uh, downtown tree. Uh, the, in light. Uh, the, um, the downtown tree and acorn light replacement. Uh, the trees will come out of the tree bank, which is fine. There's about 20 trees, a combination of both oak trees and, and palm trees. And then also um, the, there's about a similar number of acorn lights that are missing. And I think that goes right hand in hand with um, Vice Mayor Carr's vision of the downtown. A long time ago, they used to be actually placed on the property lines between buildings. And I'm not gonna go through that tonight, but they were all removed and, and with the rehab of the sidewalks or the bump outs and everything. And the conduit for replacing the wires was left out and it was all retrofitted and it was retrofitted the way you see it now. So it, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit of a redo but that's something that I'd like to address maybe a little later on, but once we get into our planning and prioritization, doing a little visioning for the downtown, incorporating some of the beautification things that Vice Mayor Carr is talking about and taking these into consideration as well. So I'm not asking for any money for the acorn lights right now. I just think it's something we need to kind of plan on doing in the future. Um, the uh, sponge dock sound system and lighting, these, this is really nothing new. This is something that Commissioner Seaver had been working with over a year, and um, uh, Mr. Function had done the cost estimating on much of this. And then, of course, on top of the uh, distributed sound system and also the um, um, the lighting, 
um, I've introduced uh, the webcams and also a super link, which would go to promoting our sponge stocks. And we could certainly look at that for the downtown as well. But if you go and look at that stock island webcam, I, I think you'll see the potential there for our working waterfront as well. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I just want to comment about the uh, sponge dot sound system. If I remember correctly, years ago, when the uh, did all the work down at the sponge docks, they had placed a conduit in, to put those uh, sound systems, those big speakers. I don't know what ever happened with the conduit, but uh, this is something that has been gone for years. Vice Mayor, uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I can address that, City Manager, of course. There were some sewer work, all kinds of work down there where the old conduit was taken out. So we don't have that in place anymore. It's just due to the repairs. But this is a um, this is a um, uh, what do you call it a Wi-Fi system that doesn't require the electrical conduit. It just re requires the um, electricity from the lamp pole. Which wireless is much better. You don't have to worry about wires. It doesn't have to work on wire. No. Yeah. Um, here I've got to plug myself in. So, is there any other questions? I don't have any questions now. Uh, Vice Mayor Card, do you have any questions or comments? I mean, from a placeholder, uh, I'm curious to learn more about the the lighting sound systems down in the sponge docks. Uh, I would love to see more lighting down in the sponge docks. I think there's plenty of opportunities there. Um, the sound system side, I'd like to learn a little bit more about that from the cost. Um, and then uh, obviously we'll have some more discussions about the downtown and the acorn lights in downtown as well. Okay. Commission Chair Panny. Um, regarding all of the mayor. Um, yes. Yeah, Any the, comments, questions? The, no, it's all good with me. Okay. Commission Donovan. Yeah, Mayor. Um, I just had a couple points to make. Um, Commissioner Vaticiotis, thank you for bringing this up. I think especially the lighting down at the sponge docks could be greatly improved. I think that's a great idea. Um, as far as the sound system, I'd love to learn more on um, just stuff like the choice of music and the overall volume and placement of speakers. That's going to be some stuff that I think it'll be really tough to agree on. Um, and I also wouldn't want to hinder any of the live music down there uh, that I know a lot of the restaurants and sometimes the sponge exchange employees. Um, so I do want to learn more on the music. Um, and are we going to hold our salary comments until uh, the later agenda item there, whether it's tonight or at a future meeting? Well, I, I, actually, uh, I'd like to express my appreciation to uh, Commissioner Vaticuris for bringing that up. But also, we have uh, a, uh, it's an item there, a salary comparison. Uh, we budgeted 3% increase. So I, I'd rather we talk about the whole thing in one time instead of piecemeal. It's okay. I'll I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, was a Vice Mayor Carl, did you say something? I did not. Okay, somebody did. And I didn't mean to rep Commissioner Donovan, but is that 3% tonight or is it after the 1st of September? <clears throat> did, did anyone hear me? Or? Can we pull the screen down so we can see each other again? Commissioner Vaticos, you'd have to stop sharing your screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. There we go. Um, Much better. I apologize. Um, I didn't understand whether that 3% adjustment we're going to be talking about is tonight or the first EOC meeting in September. Well, I can tell you we're not going to get to it tonight. It'll be at Monday's um, budget hearing. Um, remember on that, um, we talk about it in the budget, and then I have to bring that to you a whole resolution with all those items, the increases, the rain changes and stuff, usually at your first meeting in September. So so we'll have two opportunities to discuss. It's item five tonight, but obviously we're not going to get to them, item five. Um, and then it's going to be, you know, brought to the commission um, um, on, the, on a regular agenda at a regular meeting, which, which would be the first meeting of September. Yeah. I, I was just clarifying whether in terms of the, the city clerk salary increase, are we going to talk about that tonight or is that something we're going to talk about during the wages and salaries item? 
I understand doing the presentation. I'm not, I'm fine with the presentation. I'm just wondering for like questions and further discussion if I should save that. We're going to be talking about that later with the uh, salary compensation. Might as well talk the whole thing at, at the same time. That's what I think. Okay, because we, right. we still have the CIP budget to, uh, uh, to go through. We have the CIP, the CRA, the enterprise funds. Yeah. So we've got all those things too that we need to address. Okay. I, may, I, may, or may I ask a question? Or I mean, I, is there any, any of the commissioners have an objection to this or just questions at this point? I'd like to get a little feedback similar to what other commissioners got on feedback with their projects and requests. If I can make a statement, um, there's some, I need to see some more backup to understand the grade wages. Um, I mean, the, the upper and lower limits and where they end up falling. So um, I'm, I'm happy to support an increase from both deputy clerk and the clerk office um, to make them more aligned with the rest of the, um, the employees of the city. But I, just need, I need a little more backup from the city staff they could provide, or, or you could provide it via email uh, through a memorandum. Um, I just want to see what the, the wages look like from a upper and lower limits um, as well. So that would be helpful for my, for my thought. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and just a reminder, we had asked Mr. LeCour at the last meeting to provide us with a survey of all the positions, including the hourly employees, directors, and charter employees. Uh, Mr. LeCour, uh, I, I, you think you're going to have it by Monday? You're going to have it, but you keep saying a study and it's not going to be, it's going to be an analysis of where we've been through the process. So the studies take two, two and a half months to do. Um, and it, it, it was easier as again, in 2000, up to 2015, we we're able to use the Florida League of Cities and they surveyed all the cities and it was a lot easier to do those things. So my synopsis is going to be from where we left off in 15 and how we've done it every year and where our where our salaries are and commence it as opposed to an individual, everybody's salary analysis. So that is what I'll be bringing to you Monday night. Mayor, if I may interrupt as well or interject, um, you're not going to see a comparison with the city clerk salary. No. There isn't anybody else. So the city manager and I have talked about that, and that's been the problem in the past. There's no other city clerk that's a clerk and a collector. We're very unique in that situation. I think it's unfair to the city clerks to keep trying to compare them to what other city clerks made. There's just no comparison. And I think that's part of the problem. It's been part of the problem anyway. Okay. Any other comments on this? Yeah, if there's any other information, any of the other commissioners would like, I'd certainly like to obtain it before our Monday night meeting and have it for them. Okay. I, I just want to clarify, what's that analysis, um, which I, li I like that, the wording there, um, Mr. City Manager, what's the, I guess, the analysis, which ones are that, is that going to cover? Which salaries is that going to cover? It, it's going to cover the uh, city employees as a whole. Okay. So is that just going to be like our city employees versus other cities employees? Or are we actually going to break it down by like apartment? No, like we're department? Not, that's, that would take two, two and a half months to do. Okay. Okay. I guess uh, I'm just going to wait um, then, Commissioner Vaticiotis. I certainly appreciate the notion. And, um, you know, I have great experience with our city clerk and our deputy city clerk. And I'm not saying I'm going to oppose it. I just, I want to know a little bit more so it doesn't send the wrong message to the rest of our employees that, you know, hey, we're just picking two individual employees that we really like and have a great relationship with. And we're increasing their salaries. I'd like to see more of a comparison on the whole you know, when it comes to, you know, maybe like our police or our fire or public works, that kind of thing. Um, just a little bit more information as to, you know, how their scales compare, because maybe their comparison is, you know, just just as out of whack. Yeah. yeah. Mayor, if, well, I may, if I may just uh, finish up with Commissioner Donovan, um, you know, I want to tell you how I got to this point. All the other budget books that I've been looking at from 2015 on, I look at the in the under city clerk to see what's going on, and in the in the in the budget before you get to the detail in the back, it's got executive salaries, and it's like 118 or 119 thousand. So I always assumed that was the city clerk's off uh, <clears throat> salary. And this year, uh, earlier, I started looking in the detail, and that included 
one half of the deputy city clerk's salary as well as the city clerk's salary. And that's what raised the flag to me. It's like, holy Toledo. I thought the 117 was a fair salary until I saw that. And that's not what she was making. So it's not an issue of a favorite employee. It's just a fairness issue for me based on what I've seen and, and uh, uh, charter official, not even uh, with the responsibility that they have and the fact that we, and, and um, I, I don't, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of employees that would like to see the same kind of adjustment, but um, quite frankly, I, I just think our clerks have not been, um, uh, we've not been, we've not kept up with them in the past. So that, that's why I'm bringing this forward. Yeah. So thank you, Mayor. We need to move on, but I, I like to comment that uh, both the uh, city clerk and the deputy city clerk are both outstanding employees. They do an excellent job, and uh, they should be getting pay, uh, a fair pay for what they do. It should be compatible to their directors. Uh, with that, and I think uh, Mr. Liqueur is going to provide us more information about all the employees on Monday. Uh, I think we should move on to the CIP budget unless we have something else because we're not, we're not going to get done tonight. I'm, I'm good to move on there. Okay. Give me one second guys. Okay. I have, uh, the, I'm, I'm, I'm using the executive summary book on the page one or six. It has the, uh, the public safety, the body cameras, $2,000, Mr. Liqueurs. Uh, I know that uh, our chief has been working on that over a year and a half, and he's getting, uh, getting information and all that. I just want to make sure that uh, that's going to include the, the base, the monitor <clears throat> equipment, and we're going to have a complete system, including training with that two, uh, $213,000. Chief, you're on here. Could you give that answer, please? Thank you, uh, Mayor. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so we've been, like the mayor said, we've been researching this for at least a year and a half. We really did our due diligence um, with the body cameras. But the total right now that Ron has in the penny fund um, is 212.958. However, there's another 9,000 on top of that to extend it to a five-year warranty that Ron's still got to put in. It's, it's a really the right way to go. But yes, Mayor, that, that number includes, and again, it's on a GSA Homeland Security contract. It's with our current vendor WatchGuard that also has the cameras in all of our police cars. So it's a kind of one-stop solution for everything. But that includes all the hardware, the software, um, everything um, that we need to outfit the system with the exception of the training. That's just simply done in-house. Oh, okay. That will be done in house over the next several months to, you know, for all the officers, but we're working on all the logistics for that. So I hope that answered your question. Thank you. I just want to make sure we have a complete system with everything you need. Yes, 100%. This is, a, this is the right way to go, and it's going to be a very good system. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Vice Mayor Carter, any comments on that uh, public safety? It's only one item there. No, I, I talked to the chief um, about the vehicles and the body cams, cameras. I have no further questions. Okay. Commission Terrapani. Uh, Mayor, are we going to talk about capital improvement projects uh, by like department or in their entirety? In what, I, what I was planning to do is uh, the, uh, the capital improvement projects, our uh, program is actually divided into a uh, different sections like the public safety, uh, physical environment, which is water and sewer, and then the projects and then go down to the transportation. Okay, so you wanna talk, talk about them individually? Yeah, I think it will be easier to do that. So uh, in the next, you know, we finish with the uh, public safety and then we go to uh, uh, physical environment, which is water, then we're down to the sewer and any projects that you want to talk about. And, and right. then we go to transportation. All right. Thank you. Um, so regarding, you got any, you got any other ideas that might be better or no, no, I just, I, my, you know, I have like my message, my thinking with the capital improvement projects, at least in the physical environment, 
aspect as it relates to the water and sewer and then the miscellaneous projects that are associated with that, I guess, is one train of thought for me. So that, that's fine. I'll, I'll talk about public safety. Um, my, my only real question is uh, the line item bunker gear grant funded. Uh, my assumption is that that was some kind of a matching grant. Um, and that was our portion that we contributed for the 122. Is that right? No, the grant is going to cover the full cost of it. But so it's a grant, right? So we're receiving these grant funds. It hasn't been approved yet. We've applied for the grant. Okay, so we've applied for the grant and it's not a matching grant, but we have a $122,000 line item. Correct. So we're, if we don't receive the grant, we're going to fund it ourselves for 122. Yeah. I guess I, I know the chief and he's, he's, he's been waiting on some bunker gear and as he's got his second set has been outdated. So I know he's been trying to get this bunker gear. So I'm not sure the exact status of the grant. This is Scott, the fire chief. We applied for the grant. We're still waiting. The AFG grant from FEMA was delayed. Uh, because of the COVID issues, it's it's been submitted. Uh, usually, we've heard by now, but it's we might not hear till mid next year before uh, if we won the grant or not. It's a ten percent match grant. Um, this will replace our, our frontline gear now. Our frontline gear will go to a reserve status, uh, uh, which were required by uh, NFPA code to have two sets of gear. Also, with the new cancer presumption. Uh, uh, law in the state were required to have two sets of gear. So uh, this would just replace the frontline gear now, put it in reserve status and put all the firefighters in the new gear. Uh, the gear we have now is about eight years old. They usually lifespan is around 10 years, they recommend. Uh, we usually can stretch it if it's reserve gear though, if it's in good shape. So <clears throat> thanks for the explanation, Chief. Um, so back to the, the question, I guess we're waiting on the grant funds and in the event we don't get the grant funds, we're going to fund it in its entirety of $122,000. Yes, that's the plan. So if we don't get the grant, we would be able to still purchase the uh, bunker gear with that money. If not, yeah. we, we get the grant, we just have to use the 10% of that. Thank you. So, uh, Ron, and in, in the way it's coded, if we could make that a little bit more clear and as far as any other places in the budget where we are funding in advance of receipt of a grant. I think it would be helpful to have some kind of a, a footnote somewhere, much as we did with like when we sell a piece of surplus equipment, right? We sell a piece of surplus equipment. And for a long time, we said, where do the funds go? Where do the funds go? And then I think last year you gave us a breakout of when we do sell a piece of surplus, where the, how much we got for it, and then what account those funds go back into. Right. Because, because for me, you know, just reading bunker gear grant funded, I understand, you know, I kind of understand that, but it's a little bit uh, confusing in my opinion. So because it's confusing and you have it labeled the way you do, I think it would be helpful to know if we do receive that grant, you know, and we're only paying 10%, that's 12 grand. It would be nice to know that there's $110,000 in this capital improvement program that's unspent. <clears throat> that's my only question, comment, thank you, as it relates to public safety. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Donovan. Uh, I have no questions for public safety, just I wanna thank both the chiefs for being proactive as always, happy to support them on this. Thank you. Commissioner Vatikiotis. Same as uh, Commissioner Donovan, I, I really want to start my comments on the physical environment, but the public safety is fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is the uh, physical environment. I got a uh, few questions that I'd like to ask. Um, if we start with the uh, hydrant improvements, 150,000, uh, 150, uh, Mr. LeCurse, what improvements are we going to make to the hydrants? We going to add any new ones or? I think I'll turn it over to, I believe, is that Paul Smith and Scott? I'll turn it over to you two. Yes, good evening, Paul Smith, Public Services Director. This is part of a multi-year program that we're working on. And each year we have to work through about 1,200 hydrants around the city to inspect them and test them. And um, also make sure that everything's working properly. 
and log anything that needs to be repaired. In addition to that, there's also something called a two hydrant test where we have to actually pump one hydrant or flow it very hard and then measure its response in another hydrant. It's quite an involved effort and that's something we're able to do in a multi-year um, phased plan where it's in four or five years. So in other words, we work our way through about 25% of the hydrants each year to make sure we make that on time. So that's a summary of the hydrant work in that project. Thank you. Mr. Smith, you got $150,000 for uh, 221, uh, and then also $200,000 for next year, 2022, 2022. And then there's year after that is only 50,000, 50,000 the following year. Why is dropping so much? Uh, Yes, those were estimates that we have to look five years out, and sometimes we have to make some assumptions. In this case, what we're saying is we're going to work our way through most of those repairs, get this thing sort of at a cruising altitude, and uh, then it's in a maintenance mode from that point out, generally lower cost. From what we're seeing so far, those 50s might be more like in the outer years but the 200s might be closer to 150. So I think overall the average is going to be about the same but the profile might be a little bit different. Okay, so we hired a contractor to do the work then, right? Yes, we found that to be very effective, Mayor. They'll bring out four crews of two and really get through the city. It still takes them several months, and um, but it's a much less disruptive way to do it than to assign one or two uh, employees and hope they don't get pulled off the job to work their way through the entire city. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Smith, I think the next one is yours too. Uh, new building for WD and uh, SC, $200,000. Can you tell us what this building will be used for? Yes, um, this is for water distribution and sewage collection work crews. And it's actually a total of 400,000 beside, and you'll see that in the table. But what this is, is right now, they've been working out of temporary trailers for multiple years. This is a way to give them a permanent building at the RO facility, so all the employees are nearby. Um, this will be built to current building standards. The design has been largely complete, and this is for the construction portion of the project. Okay, thank you. Uh, another one that I have a question is the uh, water pipe valve replacement uh, program to be five hundred thousand um, dollars. You know, this is a, uh, a it's very important that we provide quality water to the people of Tarpa Springs, and I think this is the third year we're working on that project. Is that correct? Actually, yes, Mayor. Every year we've been working on different projects and improvements, doing those through in-house work where we can, but also contracting out work. And then in other cases, major CIP projects with design and um, all of that included. This particular project, we've identified the River Village um, Park being our highest need. Um, there's a pipeline there that is, uh, needs to be upsized. It's also in bad shape. There's a lot of breaks that we have to respond to. So this is a high priority project for us to um, get in there and replace that, that water line. Do you have a way that you can track the areas that you already completed and the areas they need to be done? Yes, we can. Our GIS system is coming along quite nicely thanks to a lot of work that IT has been doing over the years. So this is something that we could put into that system to display. We do uh, update that information regularly, including the age of the pipe. So um, that could be something shown in different ways if we want to do that. Okay. And my last question is on the meter change out upgrade program, $150,000. Actually, we've been, uh, uh, we've been working on this project for many, many years. Are we getting close to finish that? 
Yes, Mayor, but it's like many things with infrastructure, probably by the time we get a citywide project completed, it'll be time to come back around and start over again, but that's not unusual. Um, these meters have a life of somewhere around 10 years with the battery. So um, this project's been ongoing for probably at least seven years and we've got maybe three more years to get this part done. So it'll probably all work out that we uh, get our way back around. I will tell you the advantage of doing it this way is um, this is an in-house project that can be done sort of as we do other things. There's no absolute regulatory deadline uh, and we can prioritize areas to make it most effective. Um, if we were to hire this out, this would be a multi-million dollar project. So sure. I think this is working well for us. Thank you. Well, that's all I have for the water. Uh, Vice Mayor Carr, do you have any comments, questions on the uh, physical environment water? Yeah, is this going to include sewer too or no? Um, I, I, I guess we can do that as well. So uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, Mr. Smith, thank you for um, your emails and also addressing the mayor's concerns. Can you just touch base a little bit more on that building? um that's being built like how many offices are going to be in there um is it going to connect to the current ro plant off like office building yes um so this is going to be a separate building it's next to the storage tank it's where the temporary offices are now and the building is going to include um, a, a couple of offices but also it's an area for the crews to have lockers uh, a shower uh, also to have a meeting area um, also a uh, break area. So it's really designed to meet their needs so that they can be um, refreshed and ready to get back to work and also have a place to uh, be staged in the event of a storm. Okay. Um, from like a water pipe replacement uh, plan, can um, I see that obviously water pipe valve pipe is like a combo for 500,000. So is it pipes and valves or is it um kind of a combination of both or is it more pipes than valves or how does that what's that actually look like yes yeah, so as i mentioned in the email when i sent you my summary table uh we budget a lot of these on what i'll call a category basis okay so these are categories that we use and we'll assign a rough funding amount each year and then as each year comes, we assign the priority projects within those categories. So to answer your question, water pipe valves, it's really either or, uh, depending on what the highest needs are in that particular fiscal year. Okay. Yeah, I mean, to me, it, obviously water pipe replacement is important because we have a lot of aged infrastructure. Um, I know that your department and the water department has done a great job over the past years replacing water pipes and the mayor brought up. Uh, being able to track it through the GIS um, system, it would kind of be a fun project to get an updated map. Um, for my for my interest, I'm sure the rest of the commission would like to see it too. Um, on any aged, um, and even for the public to see if it's something that we could put on our website. Um, I think looking at a home, I'll be interested to see what type of what the age of the pipe in front of my house is, or just where I'm at. So um, it could potentially maybe direct some decisions from the commission's base and push more money there sooner or um, kind of just lean on your recommendation. Um, so I think that could be a good idea. The other question I have is just the, the distribution collection, new building um, on the sewer side. Um, where, what's that for and what's that about? And I'm sorry, these are two that I overlooked. Um, and I should have sent you an email sooner about this. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, we actually fund the uh, one project from both sides because it houses staff from water distribution and sewage collection. So it's actually the same project shown as 200,000 in one got area. It. Okay, got it. So it's a $400,000 building then? Yes. Okay. I don't have any further questions right now. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Terrapani. Thanks, Mayor. Um, uh, where's Mr. Smith? There you are. Uh, Paul, how are you doing tonight? Good, thanks. Good. Um, so, uh, some of the additional capital improvement costs for the water plant for 250, what, what can you tell me about that? 
Yes, yeah, so that's a category, as I was mentioning earlier, we call it additional CIP costs. And a right. lot of this is towards things that can break in the middle of a fiscal year. And a lot of the parts that uh, infrastructure, including water plant, can get quite costly. Uh, a recent example, we had some chemical pump skids that failed after a few years and needed to be replaced right then and there. It's just part of our essential operation. So I've listed in my table there some examples of the kinds of things, chemicals, pump skids, uh, flow meters also can be costly on large pipes at the plant. Uh, when we have to replace those, they fail unexpectedly. Uh, also electrical switch gear, things like that. Gotcha. That makes sense. And then uh, the miscellaneous and uh, improvements and other major repairs, um, similar in nature, just not as it relates to the water plant for uh, 200. I oh, know. I'm sorry. Is that 75? Sorry. Never yeah, mind. I got that. Water distribution. Then, yeah. What about the uh, planning and engineering? Water distribution assessment. Did you touch on the planning and engineering for 100? Not yet, but thank you. Um, that's actually related to, to Vice Mayor Carr's suggestion. We're going to be looking at a systematic type approach with the water lines, and um, this is a study designed to do that. Be looking at the age of the pipe, um, how many breaks we've had, the materials, you know, there's a multitude of things. Um, our recent work is based on mainly staff input, which is very valuable, the frontline experience of where the priorities are and what needs to be repaired and replaced. But I think uh, in regular intervals, we should be also doing more of a study. So that's what. I'm sorry, you cut out at the very end there. That you, you said you think we should be doing more of a study, and that's where the hundred grand is from. Yes, this is more of a study to formalize a plan moving forward, looking at this systematically, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that would be someone we would hire some form of a consultant to help us with that. Yes, we have consultants on contract, and this would be a task that we would assign one of them. Gotcha. Um, and then I, are we talking about sewer now too, Mayor? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so then I got the other 200 for the building. Um, and I understand some of the force main stuff. I was hoping you could touch on some of the miscellaneous sewer expansions for the public. Yes, I'd be glad to. So as you can see, the funding amounts for sewer, once you divide up all the different needs, there isn't a whole lot left for expansions. So we're really trying to do as much as we can of what we have. We've allocated about 200,000 there for, um, we see the Bayshore area as one of our high priorities. Mm -hmm. We're currently working on Seabreeze Drive and that's been budgeted and be completed in the next year. So this is part of our next priority area. And so, so the, we're gonna do as much as we can. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but the Seabreeze I had as a, that was one of the ones I was thinking of. That is within that miscellaneous pump. Well, that was actually in last year's or the current year's budget. So right. we're already working with that money now. So we right. should be able to complete what we need to do. Yeah. So then we won't be utilizing any of those funds for Seabreeze because it's already budgeted and almost com in completion, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, so then what were, I know you talked about the Bayshore Heights area, but what were some of the other areas? Yes. Uh, we have some different manhole lining and uh, pipe lining that's going on under sewer system improvements. Mm -hmm. And we've identified areas in Gross Avenue, East Cypress Street, Cottage Grove, and Athens. Gotcha. Um, we've got a force main improvement we need to make, which is the pipe that feeds a major lift station at mm -hmm. Lyme and Huey. Gotcha. And uh, that's where I say, and as, as funding allows, uh, Bayshore would be our area of focus to try to continue to uh, increase sewer service over there. Right. Okay. Um, and then could you touch on the treatment uh, process optimization? Yes, at the wastewater plant. So uh, what we have is we want to work with the existing capacity we have. We have a, a very good operating wastewater plant, but there's always needs to um, have it either have higher level of treatment or meet a higher flow coming in. So this is designed to see what we can do to maximize what we have, basically an efficiency of the treatment system. Gotcha. Um, 
so my my thinking just to uh, wrap up this portion um, is that like I said in the in our previous meeting I mean it it appears that we're doing a lot of uh, brick and mortar projects in terms of in infrastructure right and I, I feel like that's shown um, in this physical environment portion of the capital improvement budget um, which I feel good about like I said a lot of times we hear residents ask uh, in detail why are we doing more of that and I think we are, it's just not readily available to them. And physically, they can't see it in some cases. Um, so I feel good about uh, most of those things. Um, I did have a question um, for Ron, if you could come back in, Ron, and uh, I'll pose it to you. And then I'll kind of sign off, being that we only have a few more minutes and you can kind of get back to us. Um, but as we look at this capital improvement portion of our budget, <clears throat> if we were to identify some of these things that were in the physical environment that weren't necessarily something that we had to do this year and we could either put off and prioritize to it next year or something was more or less a, a wish list item and and we came up and we you know cut red line some stuff and we came up with another half a million dollars more or less where are some areas that we could spend this money as as a commission in terms of other capital improvement projects? Could you spend it from a recreational standpoint? And again, this is, you know, for some of the public's edification. Well, if you're talking about the, what you're going over in the water and sewer under physical environment, this is all in the water and sewer fund, all these expenditures. They're not in general fund or penny fund. These are all water and sewer fund items. So the money would go back into the water and sewer fund. And then maybe- For like kind improvements. Yeah, Paul's got some other things within the water and sewer fund for, for these projects, but this is all water and sewer stuff we're talking about in the physical environment area there. And the money would have to be spent if it was cut from water and sewer within the capital improvement projects, it would need to be spent within the water and sewer in the capital improvement projects. It couldn't be spent for recreation or some other uh, desire of the commission. Is that right? Correct. It's water and sewer fund money. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Commission Donovan. I got no questions on water and sewer. Uh, appreciate Mr. Smith's comments. Uh, the only thing I would add is just, um, I agree with Vice Mayor. I think it'd be interesting to see an updated map of uh, some of those pipes, but I have no questions at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Tikiotis. Hey, Mayor, um, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, you do an excellent job. And um, I know oftentimes it's, as much as you'd like, it comes down to looking at your crystal ball that you've got in your office to figure out what's going to happen this year, next year, and so forth. So um, the thing that can, and, and Mayor, my approach to CIP, and I, I know that we can kind of get into the dollars and cents, but most of the discussion has been an explanation of why, what we're doing here, there, and not really about the dollars part of it. And um, I'm going to take a broad stroke to the CIP. And the reason why is because I, I think a lot of this stuff is up to the city manager for managing the funds. I think the, uh, what he's got listed here is things that need to be done. Um, you know, the, I, I just, you know, as far as a new uh, incentive or a new uh, a program, um, I know last year we were talking about the uh, $1.4 million for this uh, pipeline extension from the distant well field to the uh, uh, RO plant. And I, I'm not sure if that's in here or if that thought has kind of gone by the wayside, but I know there's this interaction between the, um, uh, between the RO water and the other water that we blend it with. And I know the county had that problem 25 years ago I think I talked to you about a, a water blending facility about how to kind of look into that. And I don't want to, I don't need to take up time for that, but if you could kind of look into that and if there's some thoughts along that line that, or if you've already looked at it, if you can get anything to us at a later date in a memorandum or anything, that would be very helpful. Um, as far as the numbers go, you know, I, I done a lot of budgeting in my life. I'm not just talking about the city, but with the military and you've got a lot of, Hundred thousand dollar, two hundred thousand, five hundred, and you round it off to the closest hundred and the closest fifty, and that sort of for uh, it. And so those numbers are very soft. And I could see that there's there could be some over expenditure at point and some under expenditure. And you just hope that you kind of got the average right. But I think we need to take a kind of a harder look during the year 
at each of these things to try and get a better understanding of what they're for and try and, and kind of uh, hone in on the exact amount that this is going to take and, and uh, try and free up some of that money for something else. Um, the one thing that strikes me, and maybe it's somewhere else, I, I, and, and for example, um, uh, and this is for Ron Herring, the city clerk's office, is that anywhere in here, Ron? Uh, is that other capital uh, ca other capital outlay somewhere else? Uh, you, you talk about the expansion of the city clerk's office, the new building. I believe, I don't know if we've gotten the final numbers on that yet. We haven't. Where I know they were trying to, but we budgeted for the engineering this year, but I don't know if that's gone out for bid yet. Well, it's at six hundred thousand, but it's as good an estimate uh, uh, for whatever other estimates are in here. It's something that we know we're going to be doing. Yeah, we've got the money set aside. We haven't brought it before the board, whether it's in a budget resolution, if it's gonna to come to fruition this current year, or we need to be putting it into next year, whether we put it into budget or we roll it over and bring it over on the first budget resolution of the new year. I, I think it's supposed to get started this year and finished before the, the next election. Uh, that was kind of- the Yeah. Game. So my, my point is, I think there's some things that are, <laughs> are in the works. They're not budgeted. We know they have to be done, but they're not budgeted. And they're certainly going to be done within the five-year period. But I don't see them anywhere in here. And the penny for Pinellas is going to pay for a lot of that. Uh, so what struck me is that some of these things are missing. Um, they're important to us. But all of that we're looking right now is mostly infrastructure. There's nothing in here for parks, uh, new parks, improving parks, recreational facilities, sports uh, facilities. Uh, the environment, nature walks, uh, water access, transportation, new streets, um, except for the sidewalks. And I, I think at some point it gets back to this planning and prioritization that we need to do some visioning, some long-term planning. And I think this is a great thing for the residents, but it's those things that they expect to have whenever they wake up every morning, turning on the water and flushing the toilet. And, and, and I think we need to do much, much better with that along the lines of Commissioner Terrapani's comments. And so I'm hoping next year when we've got more time and maybe we're not just buried with this COVID thing and operating under a handicap, I'm hoping this capital improvement program is going to look a lot different than what you see now, both from uh, the numbers and also the content and maybe put some of these things that are important um, uh, with regard to what makes life better to our residents. So other than the water blending facility, I, I really don't have anything else to say about the capital improvement uh, program. And of course, I've pointed out the city clerk's office, but there may be some other things along that line that we need to flush out as well. Uh, that's going to be up to the city manager to deal with, uh, not for us, of course. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Next is transportation. I have no, uh, no, no comments with that. We do have the uh, sidewalk fund. And uh, we discussed that in the past. Uh, Vice Mayor Carr, any comments on the transportation? Yeah, just real quick on this one, um, Mark. For well, the sidewalks, it's um, it's a hundred thousand dollars out of the sidewalk, it, or it's hundred thousand dollars out of capital somewhere, and then it's also a matching of a hundred thousand for the sidewalk fund. Is that correct? Or yes. how does that look? Okay. Yes. So technically, it's to me. Excuse me, two hundred thousand dollars for sidewalks. Yes. For next year? Okay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> there are some sidewalk areas that I would like the staff to, to look at. Um, one was being Jasmine Road from Tarpon Ave to Discovery Field. Um, the city is currently installing a sidewalk on Jasmine with the cemetery expansion, extension, um, but there's still a, a small portion that goes over some wetland um, in this area as well. Um, so this would, this would be families that would be walking um, or kids walking from the neighborhood just south of um, Tarpon Avenue over to, to Discovery Field. This is a long time um, coming. I think this, this is an area that we've been fortunate that there's not been any major accidents on this road, but it's a narrow road. Um, it's, a, it's a place where there's a playground. It's also a place where there's multiple fields for kids to play. So we do need to have some type of safe um access um and maybe we we put some signs in to direct them through part of the new cemetery i'm not sure what that looks like 
uh, on the alternative, maybe the sidewalk goes um, to the left of the, the road and the cemetery. I don't know. Um, I would imagine we probably want to avoid sending kids to the cemetery um, on the way to the, the, the sports fields. Um, and then the other area is off Riverside on the north side of Riverside, um, past Riverside Field. There's a, a major lack of um, sidewalks in that area. Um, so, again, these are all things that I've sent over to staff uh, to have discussions. And then um, road resurfacing, there's multiple areas. Again, I brought up to staff. And I, excuse me, it's in my backup uh, email that I sent to everyone um, in a, as a memorandum earlier today as well. Uh, behind that, uh, I would like to have a better idea of what the brick street and road reconstruction would be. Is it focus on brick streets or is it focus on road reconstruction? Um, and then are we just going to start pushing these funds each year, kind of rolling them over for the orange street project? Um, or are we actually going to go after some of these smaller uh, brick streets with that $150,000? And then I'm looking forward to uh, talking more in detail about um, the Walmart and Huey um, reconstruction road reconfiguration uh, as well. So, Mark, we could connect on those. Uh, yes. Thanks. Commissioner Terrapani. Uh, thanks, man. <clears throat> yeah. I know that this item is ultimately going to go into our next meeting, um, so I'll just keep it pretty brief. Uh, Vice Mayor, my recollection on the uh, brick streets and the paving is that we used to alternate um, okay. every other year, but it looks like, and this would be my question uh, to Ron, and uh, in looking at the, the budget for it, it seemed like the 150 for the street paving uh, was a little light, but, but my thinking is that instead of alternating every other year between brick streets and street paving, this year it looks like we're just splitting the funds. Um, is that what's going on, Ron? Yes, that is correct. We're just splitting the funds across there. Yes. And so we did alternate every other year in years past, right? One year was bricks, one year was paving. Yes, we did. Yeah, exactly. And is there a, a reason behind that this year? Just just we feel like we need to try and accomplish uh, both versus one or the other. I think that's what was discussed about and just trying to do it, as you just said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's I think that's a good approach um, to vice mayor's point in May you know, stretch funds a little thin in some cases when you're trying to do a bigger project, you know, it'd be helpful to have all the funds versus half. Right. Um, but, you know, in the essence of time, we can keep on talking about this uh, in our next meeting as far as the capital improvement stuff. I mean, as far as the transportation. Thank you. Commission Donovan. Uh, given the essence of time, I, I got no further questions right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to say uh, my comments on the CIP, I, I want to make sure everyone understands I'm not picking on the staff or the city manager or the commission or anything like that. It, it is what it is. We got to where we are based on what we got to where we are. I just hope we can do better in the future as far as providing something that's balanced. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Well, that leaves us only uh, two minutes left. Do you want to? Huh? Nothing, Mayor, nothing. Say, go ahead, tell us. No, no, I don't have it. I'm teasing you. Thank you. Um, I, I don't have anything else to say that uh, the time is 8.58. And uh, if we have nothing else to, uh, uh, if we're not going to ex a, uh, extend the time, uh, we're going to adjourn. And Can we'll just continue on on the... Uh, Penny funds uh, starting Monday. Vice Mayor, you said something? No, I was going to say, I just want to make sure we're, we have our priority like list going for next meeting that we. Yeah, next meeting we'll start with a penny fund and then we go to CRA and then enterprise funds. Okay. And then go down to the uh, employee salary. And that's our last meeting, right? Yes. Yeah. So Mr. Lucas, last... Monday is the last meeting? Yes, because we got the public hearing coming up the week after that. So, okay. Yeah, but it's point of order. And in the, in the uh, public meetings, we can still.
discuss, add, edit, et cetera, the budget, correct? Yeah, yeah in fact, in fact, yeah. the budget's always moving. You can do that as right. we get into the, the year and stuff. The, the budget always flux, is a fluctuating uh, document. Yeah, we have two uh, public hearings after that, uh, Commission Chair Penny. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's what I thought, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you. Well, uh, our work session is adjourned at eight fifty nine and twenty seconds. All right. Great. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. All right, guys. Thanks.